All right. All right, cool. So, but, but let, let me put it in perspective. So what happened last season is I got, I had like a middle, middle round draft pick. So like 15 and I got uh Jair Alexander, one of the top corners in the game, Bobby Wagner, arguably the best linebacker, middle linebacker in the game. He is um, now <laughs> Harrison, Harrison Smith, arguably the best strong safety in the game. And I got Eric Berry. Uh, was it Eric? No, it wasn't Eric Berry. It was, uh, oh, what's that? It was Earl Thomas. Dude? Earl Thomas as free safety. So my, and I had 72 interceptions at the end of the year. (laughs) Well, then I know for sure it's going to be quarterback draft heavy because obviously (laughs) there was some issues right there. Yeah, that's why I was, that's why I was saying it's going to be quarterback heavy this time around because, because a lot of those people that didn't have good quarterbacks had to go up against DJ and all that. So I was, I had a good quarterback. So I was looking at DJ's team, like, how the hell do you do this? So I did, I did like five practice drafts, like the first like 20 picks just to see if my strategy would work. Because I was, let me get three X Factor quarterbacks and we see if that's possible. And every damn time they were all gone by the time I pick came up, unless I was like top five. All I know is <laughs> my goal, my goal is always to have my offensive lineman be a rate 85 or higher, oh, no yeah. matter what. Well, that's that's like the, easy. the ultimate goal. Well, you know, like a good 85 play. You might have yeah, one guy yeah. that's like 85, but if you can get everybody close to 90 or higher, you're probably better off than the next guy. So let me tell you what I did last year. Last year, I, I went in and I focused those first four rounds were all defense. And that's what I normally do. My yeah. normal, I, I've never had a defense as good as I had last year. So I don't know if yeah. it was just people were not paying attention to the defensive style on the ball. Because I got Bobby Wagner in the second round. Like you usually have to get a corner first round if you really want to get a top five corner. Yeah, because there, yeah, there's only like five in the 90s, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so there's always this one corner I always want to get that's never there. I'm, I was sitting there. I did five different drafts, and he was never available, like, ever. <laughs> I was super pissed, bro. I could never find your Davies White, like, ever. Oh, yeah, that's that's who I used. In, in that last uh, podcast that we were talking about where I beat Gilbert three times, I used the Bills, <laughs> and Tredavious White was the GOAT. I had him and Michael Hyde, and I was just canceling out a whole corner. So he was trying – or a whole – yeah, a whole side of the field because he was trying to throw it to Devontae Adams the whole game. But Well, we'll see how it plays out tonight, the draft tonight. I just want to get Herbert. That's it. I, I want to have one season where I pick up Herbert because the people that have been drafting him have been have been hurting him real bad. <laughs> <laughs> Making him look like a punk, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, Bobby's, first game against, Bobby's first game against me, he had Herbert, and he threw seven interceptions. Well, I mean, God damn. (laughs) So that's how it be sometimes. All right. Well, I'm glad. I'm just saying I'm glad I'm not playing that yet. I'll probably get back into it when I get a PS5 for the graphic, you know, for the the hype of it but um that last draft i was a part of man that shit took way too long but every then people wanted to leave early so we were just waiting for their picks to just time out oh yeah i feel you this one's this one's supposed to be at eight o'clock which it's gonna be 11 o'clock for me so bro it's i'm not gonna be finished with this until like 1 a.m and then i'm gonna want to play bobby that's also part of my strategy because he gj's in my division this year so i was like let me make it as as terrible for him as possible. So I'm going to make wow. super late. No, gonna... <laughs> uh, he said, postpone it till 10. He said, push it, push it back. Bruh, Daniel, can... Daniel over here playing GM mind games with video games, bro. Bruh, you can, you can, you can ask Taylor though. You can ask Brandon. It don't matter what time it is. I will be attentive and I will be there. I will. Try. I, it is, it is true. It makes me wonder how you have a job. If you're always available, it's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> That sounds personal, but all right, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, because if, if you had the chat that we have and group me and DJ's like, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down. Like, if you didn't know DJ was in the bed, he'd be like, this nigga don't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the good thing about being on the East Coast is that since I am on East Coast, I could get my work and all my stuff done really early. So by the time y'all are done, like when, when y'all are off of work at like, what, let's say three o'clock, three, four o'clock is the average time most people get out of work on West Coast. For me, that's like seven o'clock. I've been half my day's been gone. 
Like I've already been done with everything. Yeah. I've already done worked out. I've done everything I need to do for the day. So I'm I'm free for a good portion. It's just when these people be ca- trying to call me on like the on the weekday fi- weekday games that we have, and they're like, "Hey, let's play at like ten o'clock." I'm like, "Bruh, that's <laughs> one a.m. for me. I don't know about all that." <laughs> Sheesh. Well, Brandon, are you ready over there? Or? Yeah, yeah, we good. We good. We good. Oh, what's going on, Piglets? It's your boy Taylor B, and I'm joined by my rhythm inclined co host, Daniel, DJ, and Joey. Welcome to another installment of Culture by the Uncultured. And before we go any further, be sure to click that follow or subscribe button. And remember, Culture by the Uncultured is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Excuse me, day. You know, I, I got getting my meal in on the way out here. I, I got a question. That go ahead, the, go ahead. the intro that you spit off, do you have that written down or typed down somewhere? Or is that just like first nature now? Absolutely written down. I cannot <laughs> there was there was a couple episodes back where I couldn't find my phone for a second and I tried to wing that shit. That did not work. <laughs> it, it was like it came out super dumb. It just sounded it sounded goofy. If if somebody finds it, let me know. But it was for sure one episode where I didn't read it off, and I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing that again. That was probably the other time where you used Rhythm Inclined. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been changing it usually, and that's what I did right now. I read it, and I was like, I am I know I've used that word already, but whatever. On a rotation. Brandon's, yeah, got yeah. Like a, Brandon's got like a rotating dartboard, and before the, the <laughs> podcast recording, he just throws it, <laughs> picks a new... Picks a new way to describe us and shit. Everybody's got that Rolodex of like the chick's phone numbers. Brandon's just got different names to call them. <laughs> a, li- a little black, a little black book full of <laughs> adjectives and shit. <laughs> That's funny. I just had to know, bro, because yeah, I kind of realized like you know every time we recorded, Brandon kind of intros the show or the the podcast. It sounds very consistent, so I just had to know, bro. Like, I'm glad you're writing it down because if you was a robot by now, it'd be kind of weird. I, I think I think Brandon's been cloned like three times, but we just don't know it. <laughs> Oh, the new Kodak? Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. You, you know, it's so, okay, before we get into like the other, the actual docket stuff, let's go back into that game stuff real quick because we don't have any real gaming news anyways. So you guys are talking about Madden. I want to bring up Smite real quick. So DJ plays Smite with us a lot, right? All the time. So I'm trying to think of an of equivalent to like, okay, Call of Duty, since we all play Call of Duty, right? So... A big thing in Smite, obviously, is kills. And then you want to win the game, clearly, right? So a lot of times when people are good at Call of Duty, they don't really care about the objectives. They mostly care about the kills and deaths or whatever, right? They're trying to beat somebody else's ass. Yep. So, like, a lot of times, like... You could have guys going the going crazy in like King of the Hill or like uh, Capture the Flag or something, or, or Domination, whatever it's called. But then, like, when it comes to the actual objective... Your butt cheeks, so like, because you're not paying attention, you don't care. Yeah. So, a lot of times, you guys know Gilbert. He talks shit. He likes to run his mouth or whatever, right? Oh God, and, um, this turned into a fan page, low key. This is like two or three weeks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Gilbert, low key, low key. Gilbert, shout out Gilbert, fan of the show, of course. I love him to death. Um, when he is he going to join about, though? Oh, He's got to come know, here to right? defend himself, right? I know, right? <laughs> um, he he was like, "Oh, I got a whole segment dedicated to me, yada yada yada," and then like he likes to play against me and DJ because he knows we're way better or whatever, right? He's like, "Oh, it makes me better <laughs> playing against you guys, yada yada." yada. Oh, oh okay. we're, we're like, doing... like sharpen each other's swords. I got it. Yeah, basically. So he pairs up with some guys, whatever. Me, DJ, and like some of the quote unquote top tier guys are together, and we lose. But we like dominating kills. The score is like a lot to a little in terms of kills. It just always at the end of the game type that we play, it pretty much turns into one final fight and that determines the game because like the the, the time resets for you to come back. And so if you're dead, it's like now you got a minute to do whatever the fuck you want. So at, at a certain point of the game, it's just like whatever team wins, wins the game. So that ends up what that ends up happening twice basically and then gilbert's like oh we wrecked you guys yada 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 and i'm just like bro like i don't understand what it is about these guys that don't wreck people saying that they wreck people and i'm like have you 
I don't, I don't get it. I don't. I don't. You 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 figure it out, DJ. Because I, so, I don't understand what a, this guy. There's a skill level that is being met, but the requirements to win the game aren't being met. Is what yeah. you're saying? So so what so, happens? Yes. What okay. happens is in the middle of these games. So just like how Brandon said, there's usually like a, a cooldown. So there's a cooldown before you can come back to the game after you've been killed. Now mm. that cooldown increases based on how good you're doing in the game so if you're if you if it's like the very beginning of the game like if you or it's like the uh, uh, game's only been playing for like two minutes and two people die it's going to take like okay 10 15 seconds for them to come back like 20 seconds mm-hmm. nothing too out of the way because obviously they don't want to alienate these players but towards the end of the game like towards like 30 minutes into the game when you're like playing and when you're playing like how we play like for example, I'll just I'll say it right now. When it comes into these these sort of games that we play against each other for fun and like like there's there's two different game modes that we play. One is for fun and the other one is like, all right, we're we're being a little bit more serious. This is the one I yeah, care test about. Your, test your 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 skill level. Yeah, for those ones that we play for fun, I play dumb. I play super dumb, but I play super aggressive. So I want to get mm-hmm. those kills. I want to fo- I'm not focusing on winning the game. I'm focusing on I'm going to embarrass this dude so bad that he doesn't <laughs> yeah. want to play today like he doesn't want to play anymore so whenever stuff like that happens and you're super high level and you die then you the guy that's been doing really good have a minute of okay you can't respond for a whole minute mm. while these guys that have been playing like trash get like 20 30 second cool 20 30 second cooldowns so like it's like a handicap pretty much kind of it's like a it's a built-in handicap and sometimes it happens and i'll be honest sometimes we lose those games and it's like oh like you know what i'll talk i'll talk my shit just because i i like to stir the pot a little bit i'm not really talking shit we're all we're all a bunch of friends we're all cool with each other we all just want to do this to have fun and shit but i don't i don't get it either like sometimes we have some people and it's not just gilbert gilbert gilbert's gonna talk shit just just that's just how gilbert is but there's some other people that like that talk shit and it's like I don't I don't understand. You you had 3 kills and 15 deaths. Like <laughs> at, w- at what point are you even have the the ability to say something? It's like it's like this dude, it's like this dude I can relate it uh recently in in ESPN news um Jared Dudley wrote a book and he was like throwing shots at other NBA players who at at the you know at this moment in time they're in their prime he was taking yeah. shots at like paul george Kawhi, and you know just like uh, other players in the league but it's like um we're hearing this from a guy who just won a ring on a team he don't play no minutes for yeah he's a role so it's player like, it's role like yeah, player you're, at best. yeah you're dude you're coming off the bench don't say like it's like there aren't backup players talking smack to people. That's like guys on the bench like bickering, but it's like, bro, you're not on the court, you know. Bro, don't sleep, <laughs> don't sleep on the martyrs. Okay, they're playing an important role. Okay, like I tell y'all when I when we play Call of Duty, follow me. You're not wrong. Follow, you're not wrong. Follow me. I'll show you. Where, I'll show you where everybody's at. They're gonna kill me. Follow the bullets. That's where they. At. I, I get. <laughs> no, see, that's the difference between strategy and game, and and. And individual skill set. So what I'm saying is there is a objective team wise that, you know, in most games anyway, I don't know if this is team based or it is is, right. Super team. But but ultimately, when you're playing video games, there's there is no pressure. You can play however you want to play in different games individually. And that's a luxury you have, because as soon as the match is over, all you do is go into the lobby and start a new one. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like all that, all the, all that stuff is momentary. So I, I'm like DJ. I like to play differently, different times. It's not always about the win. Sometimes it's the adrenaline of getting that that kill or pressuring somebody to test your your skill level. Straight bullying, right? But it does get to you when when you're not like when you're bullying, but you're not following objectives, and somebody else talks back. But it's like, well, obviously, if I had put my effort into that. It would have yes. been different, but it, it's okay though. Like the thing is like the back and forth bickering, like it's momentary. As soon as you're back in the lobby waiting to start a new one, that's over with. <laughs> like it's that, it's that fast. Now, that's Loki, this shit should be people, people be getting hurt. Like, oh, oh to yeah. the third nipple. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially in the gaming world, you know, especially like personally when, when we were growing up, I would say around the year 2000 is when video games really started to develop, you know, like video games existed, but the new consoles, the, 
uh, gaming online, playing each other. It was it was really just like what's the uh, Halo on yeah, Xbox? It's, it's, it sort of, what, it sort was, of made a shift. It made a shift. Hey, from, yeah, exactly. From, Halo on Xbox was kind of like competitive. Exactly, exactly. So it's like we know that certain people took it to heart because let's be honest, when we were growing up, a lot of gamers weren't weren't the type of people to do anything else but game. You know what I'm saying? And now we have a lot of gamers are like professional athletes. They're not only are they playing their their sports, but they're gaming it as well at home. So it's like a competitive edge that now is intertwined with multiple kinds of players and like people, you know? So there's definitely people that get butt hurt and take it to the third nit, bro, because I've seen it. I've I've played one simple game of Madden online with the mics turned on and I got called the N word. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> a mexican you know and it's just these people are so damn aggressive with video games are yeah. we here to have fun or not well that's a that's Fuck all that fun shit i'm trying to win yeah that's, that's <laughs> <a thing. laughs> it's, it's about winning but we've 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 moved to this sort of uh, generation now where gaming is like there's there's a professional esports is a thing people make money Absolutely. off of off of esports a lots of money off of esports and not not to cut you off too real fast dj but i also want to give a shout out because it's black history month shout out to sonic fox and punk the best mortal kombat and street fighter players they're sonic. both black sonic sonic fox is more than just mortal kombat, than mortal kombat. he is I think that's he his is, bread and butter though isn't it it is his bread and butter but he's one of the best fighting genre like period period in Gamers. esports yeah. he, he's one of he's the best. a furry Oh wow! I wouldn't call him a furry <laughs> just because he wears that. Just because he wears that. But that hat. is that is big news though, because the games you named were top five. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, all sure. time of games played. You know? No, yeah. But I mean, we moved into this generation where like gaming has now moved from that casual aspect. Like like Joey was saying, back in the day, back in like the early, or early to mid '90s or to late '90s, it was all casual. It was Super Mario, and it was all mm-hmm. these games that people would play Legend of Zelda, and they would it'd be cool. not to cut you off again, real fast, oh DJ. <laughs> Movie about that <laughs> consistency on this man. <laughs> you guys remember that movie? It was like a Disney Channel movie. Where, where like this dude goes with like uh he like adopts this kid or like I don't know if he kidnapped him or some shit, but they take this kid who's like randomly super good at Super Mario, and he goes to like this tournament and then like he was like the only one that knew like the trick to get some whistle that like takes you to the end of the game and like it was like the top three Mario players. Like we're competing. It's it's an old movie. I have no idea what it's called. I'm oh, definitely not sure what it's called. You mean Ready Player One? No, it's wow. like the Wizard. <laughs> the Wizard. It came out in 1989. Oh, you looked it up. The Wizard. It's that was um, a good ass movie, man. It's it that good. dude. It's that. It's the brother of the kid from um the the one that was dating Topanga. What's his oh. name? Oh, the, uh, yeah, Corey's brother, Fred, Fred Savage, oh, his okay. older brother. It's him. That movie came out in '89. It's called The Wizard, I guess. And he's playing like a he's playing like a Mario game or something. I'm looking at it right now. Killing that shit. Well, that's uh, cool. Ahead, I mean, uh, kind of ahead of the times with that one. Well, if you can remember oh, your yeah. train of thought, sure. DJ, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, I, I can trust you. I can have my train of thought. I was all I was saying was that it was basically we moved from we shift from this generation from the early to mid nineties up until the thousands where games kind of evolved into where it became more competition, competition. into a level of importance. You yeah. know, I mean, there's a there's a Netflix uh, speaking about movies, uh, and I've never personally seen The Wizard. It's actually something that I'm going to start watching now because that it sounds intriguing to me as someone as a gamer. But uh, there's Netflix has all these documentaries. They always do documentaries, and I'm huge on like documentary type of thing so i watched this world war ii in Mm -hmm. color that they just came out with but they came out with something i think it was like a year ago and it was about the gaming industry it's like a five five or six episode little docuseries it's like an hour long and it talks about each generation of gaming and how it evolved into the competitive aspect of what it is today so basically Mm -hmm. what we're talking about again like right now it's it's specifically like I, I forgot what it's called, what that Netflix series is called, but you can find it on there, and it's it's a good watch. I watched it when I first came out here to Connecticut, to kind of just. Oh, you mean uh, uh, burn time? The high score, high score is what it's called. Yeah, the high score. Yeah, 
And it's a, it's it, it kind of it documents all that sort of stuff of like when people started taking s- real serious ideas on mm-hmm. competition in video games before. It's kind of funny because when I was a kid, you know, I didn't always have consoles or I didn't always have systems. I did, but on and off, you know, I had to share with my brother and sister. But I played sports too, so whenever I got off a, of, you know, whenever I got out of practice or whatever after school, I would come home and I wouldn't play video games every day. One, because I wasn't able to, you know, all the time. And and two, just because it wasn't that big of a deal to me. But when I go to my friend's house, I noticed that other friends were like me and other friends were like, bro, I got these video games. I'm about to play these. Yeah. You know what I mean? You about to and, hop and on these th- sticks. Yeah. Exactly. And and those were the same kids who got home after school, play video games, play video games. And now me being 30 years old, being grown, these are the same people going to work, coming home play video games (laughs) so it's like you know it's like it's like first nature and it's crazy because a lot of and not to say gaming is just men because it's a lot of women too i'll just say people a lot of people come home and game and their significant other or partner is already with it they're like yeah this is just part of life now you know what i mean like get wake up brush your teeth take a shower go to work come back home take a shower game dinner like that's (laughs) it's like it's it's really life now a lot of life it has to do with gaming, and especially after that dude started winning million. What's his name? The Ninja. Yeah. Ninja. Uh, once that, like, there was people famous before him. Let's not get it twisted. Real gamers would know, but he was the one that kind of broke broke the social media seal, if you will, and made it to like ESPN. Because we we had Madden tournaments come on ESPN, didn't we? ESPN two. Yeah. It was the Madden tournaments or whatever. The Madden challenge was the actual name of it. Madden challenge. So that was already big for us when we were young teenagers. So uh, now it's like, yo, you know what I mean? Like it's literally every weekend is a tournament in various games. And people aren't missing out on the opportunity to make their YouTube channels, their Twitch streams, make a little money on the side while all in all playing games because you have fun doing them. You know what I'm saying? So like that document, that docuseries sounds interesting because I know just w- by us talking and thinking, I know how it affected our peers and our life. So I just want to see what like the ex- the people who studied it have to say, you know, because for me, it just feels like gaming is right up there with doing your taxes. You also can't forget the dark side. Oh, absolutely. Years, but that, but there's a dark ago. side to everything though. Oh, yeah. yeah. A couple of years ago at that Madden tournament, that dude uh, shot up the place. Yeah, that was pretty intense. Rest in peace, all those just, lost their lives that day. Yeah, that's tragic, man. Just can't live in fear like that, you know. I mean, sure, ultimately, sure. anybody who doesn't know like anything deep about computers or internet, like there's definitely people who could figure out how to find out where somebody is streaming from or where they're gaming from because they're connected, you know. So ultimately, we're all at risk unless you have some kind of like high end security or you know stuff like that. So definitely try not to be negative about it but <laughs> that shit can happen um <laughs> <excuse me. laughs> let's just, let's just hey, what's, on, what's on the menu though i just yeah. want to know bro i went to carl's jr is all i'm sorry trying to get the meal in okay. hey carl but, combo six dollar got you <laughs> i was gonna say if there's any kids listening don't let games take over your life because I feel like that Madden thing was more so like a, you know, like some kid like training his whole life or something, you know, like, oh, I got to put, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. I've been putting in all these hours and then he loses and he doesn't know how to take it. Exactly. Don't be a sore loser. Don't fucking put like your last fucking everything into one little thing, you know, don't, don't put forget. all your eggs in one basket. That's the yeah, thing. Don't, don't forget why you game in the first place. You know, um, get, yeah. games are intended to have fun and it's like get away. If you if you take it too serious and now like I we all have gotten to the point where we play a game, take it too serious. Something don't go our way. Toss that controller, even spit out that sentence. I fucking hate this game. Like we've all we've all said it, bro. And those are just all just examples of moments when we just let it get to us. I, and sometimes some days it matters more than others. You know, it's just I, funny. I hear I hear that word. Or I hear that sentence almost once I, a week. I, I to a T, right? Game. I fucking yeah. hate this I game. Like I've heard it. Why are we even play this game? That's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> on the on the clear Ooh, I've heard game. some. I've heard controllers hit the I wall. Think, over. No, just said that like two days ago. Oh, yeah. Why do we play this game? But on, the, 
on the complete opposite side of what uh, what Taylor was saying was uh, as long as don't put your all your eggs into one basket and learning how to cope with losing in general. Um, on the opposite side, even though we were just talking about how much we talk crap and how much we jostle each other, also remember to stay humble. Like you play these games and they're oh, yeah. they're, they're games, and you got to remember to stay humble. Too. Nah, damn that! Uh, Shut I your can, mouth and know your world, you brony. I can hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent say yeah. if as if you're if a lot of these arguments, then not they're not really big arguments, but a lot of these arguments that we have in Smite or in Madden or in any of these games in general, uh, just being humble and not necessarily being quiet, but being humble about your victories would probably make a lot of these conversations that we have go a little different. <laughs> Because even my wife told me, I ain't never heard you speak to Gilbert specifically. I had never heard you speak to Gilbert like that ever. And I'm like, oh, well, you never watched me play a real serious game with Gilbert. Oh, my God. Well, then you don't know, well, then you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. It's a whole. It's a different beast, bro. The gaming world is a different beast, man. For sure. It can go from ha-ha, shits and giggles, having fun, to what the fuck is going on. <laughs> that just, Bro, I, ne- I never crazy. told y'all. Y'all remember when we, it was like last year when we first started this whole Madden thing with Madden 20. And me and Gil, we would get into it, you know. We'd be talking smack to each other in the chat or on the in the group chat, but like I walked crazy, right? <laughs> I cooked up the most evil text messages I could possibly think of. I never pressed send, but I was just like, I'm about to, I'm really about to send this. <laughs> oh, I'm no. really about to send this oh, over no. a video game, but like, let me not. <laughs> I'm about it's to end so crazy. this man's whole career. <laughs> well, it's so crazy because now, like, your relationship with the the console the gaming experience is just like our experience with chicks <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's like bro you got me typing up a sentence i might not press send on <laughs> bro like this is not this is, this is toxic bro i can't do this no more fam we're gonna have to unfresh me on my psn <laughs> speaking about those speaking about those messages that you might not send there's also a bunch of sus stuff sus like you know what i mean when i say sus stuff that gets goes on in these uh these text oh, groups relax, and relax 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 i'll give the sauce i'll give the sauce <laughs> almost let everybody know in the closet. Damn. So, so don't get it twisted ladies these video games do stress us out as much as y'all do okay so don't don't give up don't give up on us <laughs> Let's uh, let's go into sports. There's a, there's a shit ton on this docket. I just realized, and we haven't hit a fucking. Thing. <laughs> we hit all the oh, games. I, I, Tom Brady went to seven. I tried to go ahead and go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Never mind. Start, start over, Brandon. Start over. <laughs> Tom Brady went to seven Super Bowl. So uh, how about those? Go ahead, Daniel. Oh, my goodness. That's your division. Uh, <laughs> That's your division. That's your boy. It's not my boy. I do not own him. I, I disown Tom Brady. I do not like Tom Brady. I was sitting there pissed off at Patrick Mahomes. I feel like I jinxed him because I used him in, in the Madden Super Bowl and lost. So I feel like half, half of what was going on was <laughs> oh, no. uh, um, so <laughs> Ownership. That's what we like, a little, a little ownership. Okay, there so, you so go. I feel like maybe I might have jinxed him a little bit, okay? When I'm sitting there watching. I'm at, I'm at a friend's house from church. We're all There's a group of us there. Everybody's going for the chief. Except for that one dude that's going for the bucks, and he's the loudest person in the room. Oh, right? and he's and just he's really <laughs> in on soaking in the glory. And he's like, oh my he's gosh, over every conspiracy. He's like, hey, well, that, it's because of the ref, right? <laughs> well, this isn't that, and he, it's because of his wife's a witch, right? And it's this is like, I was like, oh my goodness, he will, he will not leave. I know that was, I know that was. <laughs> I was eating you alive on the inside. I it could was, tell. Bro. Was hilarious. It was like it, people noticed, like how quiet I was, like because I, I was really about to just start yelling at this dude, but my pastor was there, so I was like, let me not. I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> look at and all that. So I was just like, man, just let him talk, let him have this win or whatever. And then <laughs> I can see that white man beat that black kid like that in well, black. He's Oh, stop it. Mahomes is a half breed. I don't want to have this conversation. Yeah, come on. That's Kermit the Frog. Stop playing. Oh, but yeah, he. He sounds like him, but I, I was so I was I'm so mad that I'm so mad that he won though just because for the longest time I've been like he ain't the goat he ain't the goat you know Drew Brees is the goat Purdy Aaron Rodgers is the goat and then he beat both of them and I'm sitting there like well there goes my argument <laughs> <laughs> he beat both of them and then obtained more than any single franchise I'll put it this way for my summary that. Um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was a very, very well constructed team. The, apart from Gronkowski and Tom Brady and AB, right? I know that's saying a lot. 
because yes. a lot of other teams could definitely improve how this team did. This team was essentially the same as it was last year. So obviously Tom Brady might not be the best quarterback. And in my eyes, honestly, he's still not the best in the league right now, simply because of skill set, um, certain certain things. You know what I mean? Like I watch the games thoroughly. You know, he's not the best arm. He's not the best accuracy. He does take a lot of short throws, but he's better than Jameis was last year. And that's all they needed to win. That's all they needed to win. It just happened to be Tom Brady. It could have been a handful of other quarterbacks to win with this same team. Not trying to not give Tom Brady his credit, because if you remember earlier in the season, up until about week seven or eight, when Bruce Arians was still calling the plays, they weren't catering to Tom Brady. As soon as Tom Brady and Leftwich told Arians, like, yo, we tried it your way. It's not working. Let us try it our way. And it worked. So I give credit to Bruce Arians for finally letting, you know, giving, handing over the playbook and say, here, you guys figure it out. Let me do from a team aspect, like an offensive, you know, concept. And you guys figure out the individual plays. To me, it was a full team effort. The fact that Tom Brady was the quarterback, I'm going to give him credit for. I still think he is the GOAT of football, a quarterback. I don't want to just say football, but he's the GOAT quarterback-wise. And um, I think now, if you whether you like him or not, I think a lot of people just kind of like accept it, you know? And yeah. it's okay. It's okay. Watching that game was kind of like, and I, I, hate to, I hate to bring it up, Daniel, but watching this game was uh, eerie similar to uh, Peyton Manning with the Broncos versus... <laughs> Thank you. Yes. You know why? Because even Tom Brady, when they when they beat the Packers the week before the Super Bowl, um, Aaron Rodgers outplayed Tom Brady. You can't tell me that Tom Brady was the best quarterback on the field. So that's why I'm saying, like, the better team won because Tom Brady was good enough to win with that team. But he's not better than Aaron Rodgers. So that, that the whole GOAT talk is 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 a personal it's like a personal skill set plus the team that you're on. We can't just say somebody's the best just because they're better than everybody else at their position because it's not true. It's not yeah. true. There's no way Tom Brady's better than Aaron Rodgers in the last five, six years. Listen, but he's listen, one more, man. you know? Like, y'all, what? I'm going to stop cutting off DJ, damn it. That's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's just I, I thought DJ made a really good point because Tom Brady wasn't the best quarterback on the field. He was on the Super Bowl but not the week before. But what can we keep saying? How can we keep saying a guy is not the GOAT of his position when he just keeps winning? You know, you know? I don't I, – you know, when you said he was the best quarterback on the field in the Super Bowl, I don't know if you saw those plays that Patrick Mahomes was making, what he was doing. That that kid put – and I say oh, kid with agree. all respect. That agree. that kid put the 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 most heart, the most – like the, the – weirdest and wickedest plays that i've ever seen in my life this man was parallel to the ground and still made like a 30 40 yard bomb that was dropped in the end zone Mm -hmm. he played way harder than ken i guess i meant i guess i meant statistically you got me there because the like from what what you mean is like from the snap what they had to do yeah uh mahomes still outperformed tom brady because he had to run 20 yards before looking downfield (laughs) you know what i'm saying so obviously it's impressive he's back there playing running back and then quarterback yeah i think the stat was like 400 and something rushing yards uh by running away from defenders from the linemen which oh shit since we're here let's get into let's get into this concept that i was talking about again wait wait, i want to know what i want to know what he was talking about with that paid manny thing first before he got cut off. <laughs> oh, God. What he's saying was it was a complete team that needed a, a little bit better quarterback than what they had. Yeah. And that's what happened. Was, I think that's what a, he meant. It was a complete. It was a complete. I mean, it, it is what it is, but it was a complete defensive game with a game manager on the other side that just needed to make no mistakes and give them just enough to win. I honestly thought the D-line or, or the defense of Tampa Bay was going to win MVP. I thought it was going to be a team defense MVP. I thought, yeah, I 100% thought it was going to go. Even though, but because Tom Brady got off to a hot start with the two touchdowns of Gronk early. Yeah. It was like, damn, if this, if, if this game holds the way it holds, you know, it might go to, and it did, and it went to Tom Brady. So now I'm just padding his stats a little bit. I still believe the defense earned that one though. There's no way Mahomes starts the game. What was it? Like three for 11 or 
something like nine for 19 or something. Well, that like wasn't something his crazy. Because there was like this he, one pass he threw the, I think it was Tyreek Hill in the end zone. It was a perfect pass. He hit that oh, in the face it. mask and he dropped it. So, I mean, well, that that just solidifies my my thing for Tyreek not being a top five wide receiver. I don't care what anybody says about the speed and the route running. I've seen this man drop passes on more than a few occasions, so he's not top five for me. Not just because they didn't win, he wasn't top five for me when earlier in the season when he when he shit all over Tampa Bay early in the season when he had like three touchdowns and two hundred and fifty three yards in the first half or whatever it was. He still wasn't top five to me. That reminds so, me, great hands. saying that, Joey, reminds me of how you used to operate in the field. I feel like you used to, like, favor throwing to, like, DJ or Daniel versus, like, a fast guy that we had on our team because you, like, they're going to catch the ball. You're going to run really fast and get close to the end zone, but you, you might drop the ball. Yeah, because these guys, I, DJ, DJ and Daniel, I know I can throw this ball before they even turn around, and they got – they got the it to like just know it's coming. You have to feel in your mind that it's coming. Tyreek is more of a I have to beat you and get wide open, and now I see. Look if it's coming. You know what I'm saying? I I prefer the the hands guys. Give me the Jordy Nelsons. Give me the you know what I mean? Not because he's white. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got some grippers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get yeah. you completely. Um. We, we're not gonna get into this thing again. I was gonna talk about how I wanted the Super Bowl to be three games or best two or three. Oh and my god! Like, oh, not gonna happen, so sir. So oh, I have to sit happen. there and listen. It to was the just in three times. No, sir. No. <laughs> oh god! Oh, we hey, got you by the culture, bro. You heard it here. What did y'all think? I, I'll go <laughs> last. I'll go last. But we got. I gotta know. What did y'all think? He wasn't listening. So I didn't watch the game, but the clips that I saw of it, it. <laughs> I wouldn't want to blame him. I want to blame Stage Tech. That's what I want to blame. Not him, but Stage Tech. I have the performance looked nice though. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, DJ. That's it. <laughs> oh. Um, so as far as I know, from what I from from as long as I remember, uh, other than like Prince and Michael Jackson and a couple other big names that did the Super Bowl. Legends. Uh they didn't do auto tune in their segments other than like, obviously you had backing vocals and all that stuff, but the weekend is another one of those instances where he wasn't using auto, not auto tune. Uh, he wasn't using lip syncing in his performance. And honestly, was it a good performance? I think it was good. It was, it was a good live performance to watch. Uh, could it have been better? Probably. I mean, we never know what, sort of limitations they had to do with uh covid and all that stuff that happened i'm gonna go ahead and give him that little anchor to lean on is that maybe who knows covid had probably had an effect on this sort of uh aspect i thought it was decent i thought it was a it was something that like as someone who was who's at this time he probably had the the best artist or the best album of the year in terms of pop music in terms of i mean the grammys are gonna take that away from him but you know what i mean uh i think it was a good performance now was it better than last year's i mean as a as a as a dude i'm gonna say no but <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was point. <laughs> it was still a good performance though i mean talk about it was it was okay you know i, I, I honestly i was only waiting for one song anyway i was waiting for blinding lights and you say that to the end and i was sold i was bored for most of the time but i did notice how in the middle of a pandemic all these singers nobody had masks on first of all so I'm, I'm gonna bring that up to the NFL's attention. I'm gonna write a stern letter, get my Karen on, talk about that real quick, and then. But it, it wasn't. It, I was waiting for him to bring somebody out with him. You know, like that's that's probably one of been one of the big things about Super Bowl performances. Mm-hmm. You bring somebody from the past in. You know, somebody. Nah, I guess all me. It, it, it definitely <laughs> was all him. And he getting all the, all the all the flack right now. At least he had somebody else. Somebody else could have broke broke the monotony. Somebody else could have been like, well. His performance made the entire thing better, but now everybody that's hating on him, they have nobody, no one, no one else to throw the blame at but him. Well, uh, I agree with everybody so far, but I, I, I kind of view it from a different way still. Um, first point: it's the Super Bowl, right? So it's football. And you think about the people who like and watch football. You think most of those people are into pop music? No, but we've had other 
superstars who are making pop music do that as well, right? I'm okay with that aspect. Two, the weekend's Canadian. You know how I feel about Canada. <laughs> Three, um, <laughs> I I know it was. Let me let me be clear from a musical standpoint. It was a great performance. He sounded good. The pyrotechnics were good. He put seven million of his own money into it, and I was thinking, well, did he put it all into fireworks? Because it, it wasn't like it wasn't. It was a great performance for a weekend concert, but for the Super Bowl, it was not up to par, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Um, he spent way too much time in that room doing the selfie camera with the circles. It was like a minute and a half. Give me a fucking break. You put $7 million, Do something else with that. Wait, did you see um, the video for that? The little TikTok they made? I, yeah, I watched it. I've seen so many videos and TikTok. <laughs> what I'm saying is oh, man, I'm, with, up, man. I'm with DJ. I thought it was a good performance. The music sounded good. He was singing good. Um, the quality was fine. The lighting was fine. I just think that for the Super Bowl, it needed some other artists. I don't care how anybody feels about it. I don't care what the $7 million went toward. People don't want to watch just one person. And I know that the weekend is a very large world. Like, let's not forget the, the NFL and the Super Bowl is a sport that's only played in America. But the weekend is a is world famous, even more than the NFL, to be honest. So I get that having a global superstar is a is a great honor. But for football, you're not gonna have one guy sing R and B pop music. And think that people are going to appreciate it because it's not his concert. Oh, it's yeah. the Super Bowl. We want to see three, four people. We want to see Janet Jackson's titty. We want to watch <laughs> Prince slam out on a guitar. You know what I'm saying? We want the big show for the big show. And to be honest, from an entertainment standpoint, it was a letdown. Yeah. From a concert standpoint, it was great. And when when you it, like when you compare it to like last year even like last year we had we had Shakira and J Lo and they they did a hell of a performance and they put so many different aspects <laughs> into their show but they also had ass wow I didn't I mean it. it like that I didn't mean it like that but they also had <coughs> Balvin and Bad Bunny come up even if it was for one song each that's true you had J Balvin and Bad Bunny you got to look at the Bruno Mars one when Bruno Mars had his he had fucking he had beyonce show up it's like i mean come on it's the weekend you're you're with ovo the first person to sign you was drake you couldn't have one drake song on you know what i mean like it could don't yeah. you think that would have changed everything just like it's still the spot. weekend it's just one, one drake song spot. yeah one spot whether it was one song or a song that they could play together just something i mean it could have i think that it could have it was it was a good concert but it could have been a lot better yeah halfway through it i was like this isn't a super bowl halftime show but this is a weekend concert so i appreciated it from one aspect not from the other that's just how i feel about it but sound quality though for the part that matters to me the music though it was great although i think most of the people who enjoyed it are people who aren't football fans so that to me is why it was bogus <laughs> you know saying people who watch nfl and waiting for the super bowl aren't the same people bumping the weekend the only time they hear the weekend is when they're at walmart and it's playing through the speakers well let, let's be honest what usually happens is when the super bowl goes on you go to the super bowl the first half happens and then when the halftime show happens all the all the people that are like that were getting the food prepared i'm not going to say females but all the people that were getting the food prepared and they were getting all the the meal ready they sit down for halftime all the dudes get up refill their drinks go get some go get something to eat and that's true get ready for the next half that's true i i gotta give you that too because the people who are watching football could care less about the commercials or the halftime show so you're on to something the, there maybe i'm i'm thinking this about this the wrong the first way time in like the last couple of years that i've actually missed i actually thought back i was like man remember back in the day people go actually go play football during halftime they were like i can do this watch and then they go my, my family still does. Yes, yes, yes. Meet me in the backyard. I'll show you how to tackle. Yeah. Yeah. We, go in the back, we go in the backyard, front street, no matter what it is. My family still does that. My family still does that to this day. But I, I was I, I was, I was sitting there thinking like, man, let's go play football. Oh, it's Corona. Never mind. <laughs> oh, geez. Come on. Put your mask on, wussy. Jesus. <laughs> Um, in, in more football news, I uh, just want to give a quick rest in peace to Vincent Jackson. 
Uh, he was found in his hotel room in Florida, uh, dead. And uh, he was a longtime Chargers player. I think he ended up in Tampa Bay, right? Yes. In his career. Correct. Yeah. yeah. One of the great big men wide receivers, man. Just one of those throw it up there and see what he can do type of guys. We were actually a lot of Charger fans were very, very upset to see him leave. Oh yeah, because we there was a there was a season where we lost him. We lost him, and then we focused on Michael Floyd, and we lost Floyd, and it kind of sucks because when you have two receivers, that was a year where we had six five Vincent Jackson, six five Michael Floyd, six five Antonio Gates. What what corners or linebackers are going to cover them? Those are some big ass dudes. Exactly. So, yeah, they're still doing an investigation. I guess they haven't found any evidence of, like, no foul play or anything. So speculation is going to have it that it was probably a self-induced type of situation. And we're just waiting for the word, I guess. Yeah, that was my first thought when I heard about it. I was just like, oh, it's probably some type of drug or something like that. And um, you know, I, sadly, you know, that's usually the playbook. You know, they, they get found in a hotel. It was, it was some type of over, overdose or something. You see, you see that a lot with some that. So that was my first thought about it. So we'll see. Yeah, rest in peace to him. Um, how about the Hall of Fame inductees for this year? Oh, next year too. necessary, bro. Did you what, – what's the list? Did you guys uh, – uh, The first time, I remember my impression when I first saw it. I was like, yep, 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 yep. Like there's – it's no-brainers, you know? I don't, I don't have the Peyton full Manning list. Yeah, that's all Pey- I care about. I didn't have the full list in front of me. I obviously can search it up, but it's uh, I know it's Peyton Manning, who is first ballot, obviously one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Uh, Charles Woodson, greatest. one of the one of the best overall cover corner slash safety slash one of the first or one of the only defensive players to win the Heisman. Obviously, a great player. Uh, it Calvin, was Calvin Johnson is old dude from. Yeah, Calvin Calvin Johnson was Megatron. Talk about man, the Lions talk about making guys retire way too soon. <laughs> Barry Sa- Barry Sanders would probably would have shattered that rushing record and Calvin Johnson is worthy. I mean, come on. Like people talk about Julio nowadays and I get it. Julio's great. Probably the closest thing to Calvin Johnson, but in, in my honest opinion, nobody holds a light to Calvin Johnson, not even Randy Moss. At his wow. peak, at his peak, I know, I know, it's saying a lot. Two completely different but receivers, though. Nobody could be six foot five, that big and that fast, and not drop a fucking pass, bro. That's inc- That's Gronkowski with forty pounds down and super hops. Like it's just unheard of, bro. And he played for the fucking <laughs> Lions. No defense. <laughs> fucking get out of Detroit. Get out of Dodge, bro. Hey, just, but but for something though, just imagine if just imagine if Sanders. Uh, Johnson and Stafford were on the same team at the same time, and still wouldn't have no defense. So I don't know. So I don't know <laughs> that thing, That sounds nice. That sounds like a great Madden playbook to me. Yeah, the, the other people were was uh, John Lynch, and then four old people that have no idea who I'm looking at. They were before my time. Oh, um, Alan Fanica, yeah, Alan Fanica hard for, yeah, he. Did, that's a good one too. He was Drew a real Pearson, Tom Flores, and I can't tell who this other receiver is from the Cowboys. They blocked his name. Is Tom Flores? Is Tom Flores the father of the Flores coaching Miami right now? I have now? no idea. This guy looks black, so I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> the Flores cor- Brian Flores is black too. Oh, um, the guy well, in that case, it's Miami. very possible. It's very possible. I don't know. I'm like when, when you that, notice I'm how connected football is, like the coaching and the GMs and stuff like that. It's, it, it's oh yeah, the generations, the, the football yeah. families. The football families are huge, like especially when like they were. I, I forgot I was watching something where it was talking about the Matthews family, and I I didn't even know that the that the Matthews family was that big up until Clay Matthews became big, and they started talking about his dad and his brothers. Same thing with like the Bosa tree, the Watts tree. It's like, man, what are where are these families? Like, where can I get into these families? Like, you got one. and like have my. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I looked it up. It's not his dad, but you know, my bad. <laughs> it, it just because I knew that Flores guy was also dark skinned, so I was like, well, wait, 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 is there well, at least at it's least not. you made the assumption off the last name and not off that they look, you know, the same color. So props for that. Props. For that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, 
what, do we have anything else in sports? Bro, we got a lot. We got a lot of booyaka shot in here. I'll fire it off if you want me to. We went through Hall of Fame, this and that. What's um? It's been it's been almost an hour. We should probably just skip whatever left of sports. Just now we can go through it real quick. All the crazy stuff that's been going on. Y'all saw the thing about the girl with the gorilla glue hair. <laughs> I just okay. don't understand how you get that. Let's wrong. just let's just get let's just get some yes or no answers. Do you guys think she's that stupid? Yes or no? I don't want to be rude. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna say yes. Like okay. month, but yes. So so we're so we're all in agreement that she didn't actually do this for clout. That she actually is that dumb. Unfortunately, yes. 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 Okay, okay. Or, okay. Or, <laughs> or, or maybe she's actually that smart, and she was like, "It don't actually say it on the bottle." Let me do this. It you says know, people, that. It, it says, says but I mean, skin. it says keep off the of skin. But where does your hair grow on your skin? Come on, bro. Like it's, it's so simple. It says and other surfaces. That don't mean your fucking hair, bro. Like come on, bro. She got it. She got it confused with moco de gorilla. If if you that <laughs> the gorilla snot. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, she got it removed though surgically. The, the doctors took care I just of her. Plastic I just, surgeon, I guess, took care of her. I don't understand how she raised twenty G's for that shit. Why? She got it for free though. I know she got right. it for free, but she got a she had a GoFundMe to fund the to fund the amount. And it's like the operation. So, yeah, the operation. So on top on top of that, she's suing Gorilla Glue and a lawyer actually picked it up, was like, Yeah, this is a good case. <laughs> There's no way. So I guess I guess um People donated, and the doctor who f- fixed her fucked up head did it for free. So she's sitting on like probably twenty k, and I guess she, I guess she donated it to charity. So if she, if she did donate the money that people sent to her to charity, that tells me that she really is that dumb. So, we, <laughs> so that, this case is an open and shut, open and shut claw, you know, case. Um, what else? What else we got? I'm just gonna start rapid firing, bro. Uh, Bow Wow wants to join the WWE. So this also comes off the news that Bow Wow <laughs> is one retiring and two dropping another album. Wait, wait, retiring from what? I was gonna say retiring from what? I haven't heard oh, from Bow Wow. Say, come on, man! Don't don't do this, Tim. Wait, wait. Oh, you mean on, from? Man. You mean from? Well, I was a legend, man. Come on, don't do it from, like this. From a legend? <laughs> from the music? You said a, a <laughs> legend. <laughs> He's retiring yeah. from being on coach planes. He's he's been retired for fifteen years, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, he you think, been. You think we retired right. him a long time? What do you his think big, his last good album? His was? biggest his claim to fame was dating Russell Wilson's ex girlfriend. Like, come on, bro. I'm <laughs> this man. I'm sorry. Uh, Didn't Future date like five of Bow Wow's exes? He is like. Like three or four of them. It's some weird shit. Mister Me Too, Mister Hand Me Downs, Jesus. <laughs> It, it's something weird. there's like a weird connection with Bow Wow Sierra and Future. I think, I think it's something like he and obviously he's Sierra's baby daddy, but then he's also Bow Wow's another ex girlfriend of his uh, baby daddy too. I know so like, it's crazy, bro. It, it's a weird shit. I don't know. It's fucking. But, but like, back to the question. All Bow Wow's exes. Back to the question though. Bow Wow wants to join the WWE. I just want to hear a yes or no. Do y'all give a fuck? Not really. Okay. Okay. Only, <laughs> only, only if, only if he's fighting Levar Ball. He is I, five. I see two. Two. He's super tiny. That's he's what is like interesting. Five two. It's the only league of wrestling he should be joined in with is other midgets. Cat Williams. <laughs> Who else? Who else? Spittle, you guys know him. Kevin Hart. It's Kevin a league Hart. of. Oh my god. It's a, it's a league <laughs> of extraordinarily small gentlemen. Okay, like that's what I'm gonna call it. What? <laughs> I, that's hilarious. I, I mean, come on, bro. Excuse me, because he's so tiny. I would want to see the the antics they try to put him through. Bro, this is not I mean, like Mike. He no. can't put on Steve Austin's old wrestling shoes and turn into freaking Hulk Hogan. He can't this do it. Great concept, and I'm sure that Vince McMahon would try to market that. Put these, oh, put I these shoes on. These old old, old vest. Uh, <laughs> what's going on? Hey, what if it's and Andre the Giant drinking beer and fucking being a badass? <laughs> what if it's Andre the Giant's people? boots? <laughs> can't even fit them. <laughs> what, what would you call? What would you call his like main move? Bow Wow puts him in the Bow Wow, or oh, he's Stone Cold is putting Bow Wow in the doghouse. Everybody, <laughs> I don't know what you would call it. And it looks like Bow Wow. Doghouse. It looks oh, like man. Bow Wow is growling at him. Let's see what his move is next. 
Come on, bro. This oh, is absolutely him ridiculous. The down. Oh my god. I would troll him so bad. I would come out to all his songs. Segway. <laughs> Al Wow would have to wrestle women, which brings me to the next topic. Oh my god. Fallon Fox. That he sh- oh, I don't even want- This is the not trans- gonna be a nice topic. The tra- no, no, it's gonna be very fast. The trans woman who was a female MMA fighter, born a man, was breaking women's skulls in the ring. And that story happened when 2014, but it's resurfacing because Biden just signed that thing that lets transgender people um, it was to stop discrimination. In stop discrimination. People. But the problem is when you're trying to mix, when you're trying to mix these theories and ideas with sports, the physical aspect of it is going to, you know, the nature of it is going to reject those ideas, you know. So I saw this thing pop up, and we were just having a conversation off air about how it's pretty much it's immoral to the sporting world. It's not fair. So, so real, real quick, let's give a little backstory real quick. Uh, first and foremost, I don't have uh, like a set time. I know you guys have to do your draft, but I don't care how long this goes personally. Disclaimer. But also, yeah. But also real quick, um, I know this fight or this, this Fallon Fox, the fighter Fallon Fox uh, fought from like 2013 to 2014 or like 2012, 2014, something like that. Retired in 2014. That's the main thing. Was knocking women out, basically, like like Joey said, fractured skulls. Um, I think she had three knockouts, uh, two to like uh, one to decision, and then she lost a fight by KO. Uh, she, she got knocked out. So, like Joey said, it's definitely immoral. <laughs> uh, I know when we talked about it, we came about it more of an aspect of. Obviously, men and women are built different, no matter if you are post-op or feel that you are a woman or feel that you are a man. I even, I even made a slight joke that said, like, oh, if you're a transgendered woman, uh, then you need to be fine niggas. And then if you're a transgender <laughs> male, you need to not find out that men and women are built different. Right, um, and and it's nothing. It's nothing. And I'm not trying to say that like a woman who's like trained to fight can't kick my ass. I'm not saying that at all. Mm-hmm. But what I am saying is that two professional fighters on that level, a man and a woman, more than likely because of bone density, because of genetic make. Are make, yeah, genetic makeup. You know, wrists, arms, things like that, muscles, shoulders. More, than, yeah, more than like hips. More than likely, the man is going to beat the woman most of the time. And it's and just from a sports aspect, it's all about fairness at the beginning of a match. That's all it's about. It's nothing personal toward your life choices or anything. We're just saying when it comes to sportsmanship, fairness, and and you know, games, if there is no if there is no fairness level, if there is no ground level, then the game isn't meant to be played, you know? Like it's just that simple. For sure. I, I went a, a step out here and a step further and said that I don't think that transgenders really have any room in non co ed sports. Unless if you're uh, going for whatever like your original gender was you know if you're born a man or born a woman then you compete in that that field or whatever because vice versa like if a woman tries to compete in the male field Mm -hmm. it's very possible that he or she could get hurt you know i think it's okay i think it's okay to discuss this topic for every sport individually we know that football is different we know baseball basketball is different but when it comes to bowling darts pool anything tennis. that's another like that. exactly yeah. any well e- some would might even say tennis but that is one that can be discussed in a different sense you know what i mean like you have people come, like, if you have the other people come to an agreement in terms that yes that we'll accept this this is okay fine but you saying that a sport should allow this you're speaking for everybody of that sport and let's be honest stuff that has to do with fighting wrestling or aggression or size mass that stuff's not going to work even speed i have if i'm not mistaken a similar thing kind of circulated uh recently about uh, a transgendered woman like r- like destroying female records oh like right the right the track and field like right yeah and it was just like well because she's a man so you know like they're naturally more athletic 
So when it comes to terms of speed, things like that, you know, you can't compete with the men, but you run with the women and you're smoking everybody. It's not really fair, you know? So I don't know. It's, it's not and necessarily. It's okay. To it's okay. And I want to, I want to kind of point out something specific just so, just so that people don't think that men are just better at sports than women. That's not what we're saying because even in sports where men where males dominate because of their physical stature, they don't dominate in other areas. This is the reason why women basketball players have higher shooting percentages. The ball sits in their hand a little bit larger, so they have more control. A man who is six foot eight, six foot nine, where the ball sits in his hand much smaller, has a harder time putting up a jump shot because it feels smaller in your hand. It's just like me throwing a football and trying to hit a target from 20 yards away and then me throwing a smaller football. You know, it's it's just harder because it sits in your palm differently. So yeah. those genetic makes are positives in other areas. But when, like, again, when it comes to aggression and things like fighting, it's it's where's the fairness where it's just not For fair sure. i granted i don't want to watch women beat each other up in the ring anyway i mean i honestly i don't want to watch men beat each other uh, beat each other up in the ring anyway but it's a part of my life already you know like it's our it's it exists so as long as it does exist at least let's make it right fair you know? yeah for sure um speaking about another woman that could probably knock niggas out gina carano Fired <laughs> Jesus Christ! The Mandalorian. She is pretty large, isn't she? She looked bulky. That's a big girl. That's a big, that's a huge bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you, I don't think everybody has watched the Mandalorian yet, but if you have, minor spoiler alert: uh, Gina Carano plays a character called Cara Dune, I believe. She's like some kind of like paratrooper soldier, or whatever that that Mando runs across, and like. I think the first time they encounter each other, they kind of fight a little bit and then like they team up to like help these like third third world planet whatever people. Um and then later on she comes at the end of the se- first season and then she's also seen again in season 2. I can't remember the episodes. I, that show doesn't really appeal to me for whatever reason, right? So she's been saying some things on social media, Twitter or whatever. Uh and I got to be real honest. Some things that I did not really see a crazy problem with, but then obviously working for Disney, a lot of the things she was saying was very problematic. I know she compared like being a Republican to like being a Jew during the Holocaust. She said there's no such thing as systemic <laughs> racism. Um, she was making fun of like all like the the COVID stuff, kind of like you know she just obviously expressing herself, which we kind of came to the conclusion is not illegal obviously but obviously that also does come with consequences from your work just like for anybody else depending on what you're saying or spewing there's a good chance that you could be fired it's just you that know? what once you reach a certain a certain level of what what's the word we use like notoriety like when your your position itself is of importance just because of who you are or what you're connected to once you reach a certain level people aren't interested in trying to teach you anything because they assume that you're already maxed out at who you are. So any any anything that you say or do that is wrong is only a mark against you and not a learning curve. So that's something I don't agree with. But what I will say is you, you hit it. We, it. Being insensitive or ignorant to topics is not a it, it's not against the law. It's not a sin. But when you are in that position, pretty much that's why I said these celebrities need need life coaches. Don't post nothing that's going to be that's going to cause, you no political issues or this and that. Yeah, we don't want you to just be quiet. But at the same time, know that you have millions of eyes on you. You have to be smarter in every moment to know to stay away from that stuff. And unfortunately, when you express yourself honestly and open how she did, it brought to light a lot of the you know, a lot of the topics that the general population is not fucking with, especially not if you live through 2020. Like, yeah. how can you be so stupid to say some of the things you saw when you just you witnessed people dying in the hospitals from COVID and you're trolling, you're trolling it like it's fake. Then you're talking about you're trying to you're trying to compare systemic racism to what was what was what was it? She said, we don't have a systemic racism problem. We have an extremist leftist 
problem or something like that. Okay, well, paint yourself black and hang out for a while and see what happens. You know, then 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 figure it out. You know, it, it's. But what I'm saying is, when, when she said that, nobody was really trying to put her up on game or school her. It's all about tearing her down. And I'm not in the position or the one to care if they do tear her down because what she said to me was kind of ignorant. But at the same time, let's understand that we need to stop holding these actors, actresses, music artists and athletes up to a standard that they that we think that they're just all knowing and they're all like progressive. They're not the regular people with hype jobs. So let's just remember that moving forward. I don't know if everybody's worth losing their job over their comments. I mean, Nick Cannon did and he's uh, he's back now but um yeah you're not going to be in the eye of the people and speak freely like that your freedom of speech goes away with the more money you have you know in a way in a way yeah speaking of nick cannon and wild and out that that like you said it's looking like it's coming back um my guess is that viacom was missing that wild and out money because if i'm not mistaken absolutely number one show Um, (laughs) why why I haven't on minority subjects been tuning into our products. Oh, uh, I wonder <laughs> fucking why. <laughs> the most lucrative one. You got rid of it, sir. Well, bring it back. <laughs> so yeah, there's that's that's pretty cool. I mean, obviously, we're I don't know why people get so offended. Why do people get so offended when you talk about Jews? <laughs> you know what it is. The, you know, here's the weird thing too. Even Jews don't let other Jews borrow money. They're not that nice. Come on. Oh my god! I mean, did you hear the story about that little boy that asked his father for for some money? He goes, "Hey, Papa, can I get fifty dollars? Forty dollars? What do you want thirty dollars for?" Like these guys are like really cheap. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna say it. I don't care. You can't cancel me. I was nothing to cancel. <laughs> so real quick though, I I want to just say that because of the Nick Cannon and because of the. Uh, the Gina Carano thing. I have noticed one thing though. It's like taboo to talk about them, like at all. I'm like, going to address it. black people. People can say the N word with the hard R. People can like disrespect black people in general. Call it freedom For, of not, speech. Not, not all the time, but like you know, yep. to, to de- definitely a bigger and more tolerated amount. Exactly. Then like ju- like you mentioned Jewish people or say Jewish people aren't the real Jews or say that. You know, like like even with the Gina Carano thing, and please forgive me, any Jewish listeners, I felt like I understood what she was trying to say. All two not of you. I agree with it. Not that I agree. <laughs> not that I agree with it. I just feel like I understand what she was trying to say. So what and you're saying I- is you had an aha moment. <laughs> This is the last episode in Culture by the Culture. Recording behind bars and shit. But on a serious level, though, what I'm what I'm trying to say is like she was trying to make a point. I don't think she was trying to make a direct comparison, like most people pretty much insinuated. She Choice of words. It seemed like she was trying to say like this is the road we're on because honestly, like I don't give a two shits about Democrats or Republicans. I just want to say that nice. we, we see that all the time whenever we do discuss something political. Right. Yeah. But it does seem like Republicans are starting to face persecution just for being mm-hmm. Republican. Mm-hmm. And that was more so her point than saying like, Oh, like, I feel like I'm a Jew in the Holocaust or something. That wasn't her point. Her point was like, it's getting, this is the road we're on to where like being a Republican is going to be like wearing this, like, I don't know, just something negative. Oh, super. That, negative. That, that, that reminds me of. Uh, I feel like how everybody was pissed off because she brought up the fact that she brought up the fact, you know, yeah, that other Jews were, you know, ratting out other Jews and stuff like that. And I, I think that's part of the history. Nobody really wants to get out. Um, it's just it, even though us being, well, me and Brandon being black and knowing that, you know, some yeah, African sold niggas was so was handing out slaves to the the Europeans when they came over here and all that that's I guess that's part of it I guess that's what got everybody pissed off the most I feel like was some saying something like that because even even reading that I was like whoa (laughs) but I also feel like it's like because like social media is like especially Twitter it's so like permanent so like soon as you especially if you're famous you, you write something it's screenshot and circulate the internet you don't you could have deleted it like in five minutes 
that thing's going to be around forever, right? And the, another thing about Twitter is that you can't edit anything. So as soon as you post something, it's there. And you like got to delete it or rewrite another one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> add a comment underneath. So, so even if you wanted to break down what you're talking about, the internet is not going to give you the opportunity. You're going to say whatever you say, especially if it's that general. Like like you said, it, it says something along the lines of Jews were the ones selling out Jews and even children or whatever. And it's like, you might have wanted to elaborate more on that. You're not going to get the opportunity, though, for sure. You're canceled now. You can't say that. You're talking about Jewish people. Are you crazy? <laughs> you know, like, that's another thing. That's another thing celebrities got to remember. Even though you're on this social media, it, it that social media is owned is a private company, no matter what program platform you're on. You know, there's certain people that are running that that company. So if, like Facebook, if, for example, you know, that's owned by a certain somebody. If that certain somebody feels a certain way politically, the people that run the company are, are lean a certain way politically you're not going to be getting off your your freedom of speech <coughs> on this platform because it's a private platform and all that um because it's, it's privately owned and stuff like that i know it's 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 one of those things where my freedom of speech my constitutional right it's i can't like, stand it, when people say that dumb shit mm-hmm. it, it, it don't technically work on a private with a private company fam and social media each one of those is a private company, and guess what? It's ran by Jews. Anyway, so you, just, can't, <laughs> say, you can't be saying so you can't be saying this crazy stuff about people that that that's like me going into work saying, "Man, my boss is the biggest idiot on the world," and and turn on be like, "Yo, let me get a paycheck now." He gonna be like, "No, <laughs> yeah, done goofed." <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's a crazy scenario, and apparently she's been given the opportunity by. Ben Shapiro and some supporters or something like that, like her being able to produce her own works or something. And then some people, I guess, have petitioned to get her to be back to being Cara Dune. I don't think that any of her co-stars have said anything openly. I know that I I, I should have looked at it, but I know uh, Dana White, the dude from USC, he said something about it, but I didn't, I didn't look at it, though. I was just like, ah, oh, I would just know people want to cancel her. Yeah, it's easy for him to say. He comes from an outlet where if you got problems, you physically duke it out. <laughs> <laughs> you got problems stepping ring, son. Like, yeah. Let's say I don't listen to Dana White because his whole his whole theory of life and aspect of financial purpose and gain and, and worth is all on, you know, beating other people up. You don't really care about other people. I mean, it's sport and it's cool and all, but he don't care about it. I don't listen to him. Um, what else we got? Quick little topics. Um, oh, so the uh, passes the fortune or stimmy? I he- mean, they pay it. it- I don't. I don't expect we're gonna get it anytime soon. He's probably gonna take another nine, ten months for them to send another payment out here. But you know, Puerto Rico, here we go. March or like April time frame. Oh, oh, never mind. PS5. Happen, here we go. If it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, so shockingly enough, they are still running low on those parts. And but, but you know, you know, you know where you can buy a PS5 by. though? Real easy. Puerto Rico. I'm just saying. <laughs> you can do a two for one, fam. Culture you know, body. I have a PS5. I, I don't want a PS3 and a PS2 taped together, okay? I, that's not what I'm expecting. <laughs> Three plus two equals five, my friend. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> PS5. You don't know math? Get out of my store. <laughs> <laughs> I actually bought a PS5 controller and a camera without having a PS5. Are just, you just getting, getting the setup ready? Getting the so setup. Are, are, you, are you saying you got the rims before you got the car? Is what you're saying? Basically, yeah. He's he's trying, trying to work, out. he's trying to work it into existence. You know what I'm saying? He's got exactly, that's, that's called exactly. that's called living by faith. No, no. no. What he's doing is pissing himself <laughs> off, walking by that controller every day, turning on his <laughs> PS4. That's what he's doing. <laughs> I legit. It's because I I went to go buy a David a birthday present, and when I did, I passed by. The controller section. I was looking at games at first, and then I turned to the right, and you know, like they have like all the stuff on the racks or whatever. And I was like, "Oh, controller, camera, camera. I want a camera. If I get him one, I got to get myself one." And I was like, "I might as well get another controller too, because I probably will get a PS5 eventually. <laughs> I might as well just have this ready to go, you know, just in case." So I was like, "Let me just purchase this real quick." Yeah, you might as well just get a bunker and a few missiles just in case too. <laughs> That was episode 12 of Brandon Makes Too Much Money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what else we got? Uh, 
We already talked about Kodak Black beat. Uh, we have a few. We have a crazy story we didn't talk about, bro. Crazy one. But first, I wanna I wanna say this one. Uh, condolences to uh to Nicki Minaj's family. I guess her father oh, was yeah. killed in a hit and run. Um, you know, regardless of celebrity status or whatever, you know, death in your family is something very personal. And I don't know her personally, but you know, obviously she's somebody who kind of wears her heart on her sleeve to a degree. So I hope everything's cool over there. And that also leads up to the crazy. Crazy other news that we we read about the other day was the Sci High the Prince yeah, stuff. That's, so that's apparently, crazy. Apparently he he like releases information on Instagram with a couple pictures of the incident. He claims that he was uh, like driving and somebody was chasing him, shooting at him, shooting at his car. He says that he feels like it was an assassination attempt because. Mm-hmm. They so adamantly wanted him dead. Um, they, like I said, they chased him in the car, shot at him while he was driving. He flipped over. They were still shooting. Like he hit like a pole and flipped, and they were still shooting at the car. Over, he flipped over, crashed, and they were still putting bullets in the car. He yeah. said they left, came back, and shot more. It's crazy. That is it's that is a total. And when I was reading his words on the Instagram, I was like, you know what? I've never felt so emotionally connected to somebody i don't know especially of a celebrity you can tell he went from being a celebrity and a rapper to being fucking scared for his life you know what i mean like he literally like left it all on the instagram he post said, i ain't been in the streets in 10 years 10 years i ain't been in the streets so if it was something some payback i'm not mad come you know what i mean like tell me what i gotta do to fix it pretty much like bro that's that's how you know like at the end of the day your last breath is more important than all that all the stuff you might have Dan did in your life. You know what I mean? Sure. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But I know that's scary, bro. And and it's crazy because all this comes amid of a of an entire like last few months to to a year maybe of all these specifically rappers being a target. And I yeah, and I three. The lifestyle, like a couple months ago. I guess the lifestyle is is making some people, you know, um pretty much people with greed who don't care about your life take what you got <laughs> yeah. how the hell y'all coming for Sahai and Takashi running around here somewhere just chilling hey uh That's that dude that dude, whack 100 came after Meek Mill saying oh you you. you did all that work trying to come after who was it Safari Safari because of Nicki Minaj but you didn't want to do you didn't want to you know lay pause on 6 9 uh, if you guys got beef but I ultimately Everybody there got too much money to be beefing. Bro, I don't care who the fuck you talking to. I don't care what kind of music you make. I got my own. Why do I need to put hands on you, bro? I got security for a reason. I got my life is too good to act like I'm still slumming. That's definitely true. It is It is interesting for a couple of reasons, in my in my opinion. So when I first saw this, like this hustle and bustle with with. Uh, Takashi and Meek Mill, a couple things crossed my mind. One, I was thinking, okay, well, like, I know Takashi is one for like the clout chase. You know, I'm gonna record this incident or whatever. I'm he, of course, he has hella security or whatever. Meek Mill claims he has police. Takashi k- claims that Meek Mill has police in his employ. Um, obviously, neither of them threw any punches or something. Supposedly, Meek Mill spit at him. I'm not really sure. Um, I guess that uh, Takashi also spit some poo shiesty lyrics. He's an up and coming rapper. Uh, it was just a lot of really <sighs> stupid, like, petty stuff that don't matter. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really silly. <clears throat> These are high school arguments happening to grown folks with millions of dollars. Like for process. sure. Like, and so, so like the weird thing to me was like Mig Mill said that he on his side he says that Takashi was waiting for him, and which is weird, obviously. But it's I like I could imagine he's a, it happening. He's a cloud chaser. I believe that. For sure. And then I started wondering, well, I wonder if maybe Meek Mill got hit up for this. And he was like, hey, I'm a, like, we're going to just you know act like we have beef or whatever, you know, just something. It just seems like something Takashi would do, whether or not he needed Meek Mill's permission or not. Right. I was going to say that. I don't think Meek Mill would have agreed to that because in, in recent memory, the last year, Meek Mill's been doing some pretty good stuff for the communities for, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's been kind of advocating for some positive stuff. So it really caught me off guard. And to hear the story about, oh, he got in my face. So I spit on him and joked about it. It's like, bro, I, I don't care how good the stuff you've been doing. If you spit on me, I'm it's, it's fisticuffs, bro. <laughs> yeah. I especially with the 2020 COVID, keep your mouth closed. Shit, you is not 
putting your saliva on me, son. I don't care if I get my ass beat. And to be honest, if you remember a few years ago, they showed Meek Mill training, uh, like boxing in his backyard or whatever. Boy got no hands. <laughs> so boy got no hands whatsoever. You feel oh, me? Man. So it's like, yeah, I would have handled that quick, fast. And Takashi just a big loud mouth. And that's the thing too is like where Wack One Hundred enters, and he's like he. That point to me was pretty damn valid. He said so far he got no affiliations. He's a civilian, but you're ready to chase him down. Like literally got out the car, had the goons running after him and everything. Takashi's over here. Now you guys are just gonna leave. That's it. You're not gonna do nothing to him. You're just gonna leave. Nobody throws nothing. Nobody tries to fight or nothing besides you, more so Takashi. And then to- yelling all crazy in your face. Yeah. And let's keep it real, yelling n words. I don't know if in <laughs> New York, shit. I don't know if New York, it's okay for Puerto Ricans. And I get it. It's a different play. I, I heard um, what's his name? I heard um, Fat Joe talk about it on his podcast, and it's just the culture, blah blah this and that. Yeah, I get it. But Meek Mill, bro, you're from Philly, fam. You that shit, don't, that shit? Fly. That shit yeah. don't fly like that. Come on, bro. You're going to have some Mexican dude yell all type of N-words in your face. I'm, I, y'all my best friends. Y'all be like, I do not be saying, I don't be calling y'all my N-words like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I keep it cool. You know what I mean? You can, you can ask DJ. We have one of our boys we play Smite with. Run it back to this shit. His name, we, <laughs> I'm going to just call him Blue Ghost. That's his online name. He, so a lot of them have like this consistency of saying nigga. And then, like, we kind of had, like, this reoccurring thing where I say, there goes that word again. And even some of them say it now because they're like, yo, he don't like that shit. Stop saying that. So I forget if they were playing another game and we were playing Smite, but he was just in the party. And I heard him say, like, three times in a row, like, back to back to back. He said, get that nigga. Get that nigga. Go get that nigga. And I said, Blue Ghost, don't see me again in real life because I will fuck you up. Because I don't play that shit. Pretty I, it's hard. It's hard to, for me to see Meek Mill getting called nigga to his face, screaming Takashi, screaming. screaming that shit. Then, then he wrote it on on Twitter or some shit, and then like deleted it. But it, but like they, like I said before, they screenshot that shit right away. You're famous. That shit's on the internet forever. And it's just like yep. reading it made me so mad. that nigga. Da, 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 and I'm just like. It made me so mad. I guess and it's just like I guess that people, I, I are to, people are using the new culture as like a reason to justify certain stuff. And yes, it's just a word. Yes, blah blah. That's what that's what they all say. But ultimately, and I'm speaking to all the other Latinos out there. Ultimately, the reason why we don't entertain that word or we shouldn't is because our people, whether white people refer to us as as people of color as well or not, our history. Our ancestors, our people did not feel physical pain and, and systemic pain based off of that word. So we just got to mind our business in a sense, support people when we can, and just understand that you losing one word out of the billions of words you can use to speak with, you're not losing anything by respecting the pain that other people came from. I don't care if they turned it into a form of endearment. That's my brother, my this and that. We didn't live through it. It's not for us. Stop acting like you can't live without it. It's that simple. Be a grown up. You know what I'm saying? Have a little more control over yourself. You don't need to use the word. It's not important to us. Not saying other black folks don't. I don't get me wrong. I feel good when my when my black homies say like that's my that's my guy. You know what I'm saying? It means something coming from my black friends because it's like you see me as a family, somebody you can go back go back with. You know what I'm saying? But if a white guy comes to me and says, "Yo, that's my new," you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? That don't mean shit to me. <laughs> that don't mean shit to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't do that. So it, to me, it's just annoying when I see a lot of Latinos online openly speaking like that, you know, and stuff like that. And if I've ever done that, obviously I turn, I turn quick, fast, and stop. If I ever did, you know, because it's just not for us. So people who act like they can't live without one word and think that they're being constricted without it grow the fuck up you know what i'm saying but i'm not i'm not about reading that online like that somebody all capping uh, the n-word or sc- screaming in somebody face the n-word get get pieced up and see how you like it i think meek mill did a mis- made a mistake by not putting hands on him yeah hands what y'all what y'all gotta say to that nigga <laughs> <laughs> And see, hey, this yeah, is why Joy is in ride. This is also why DJ that if passes existed, he would get one. 
but I also, but I, but I also want to shout out our one white, fr- our, our not our one white friend, but our, our main white friend, uh, Josh. He all his friends are black, and yeah, he ain't slept one time. Even when we went to Camp Flog, though, true. It, that's not true. And, whoa, hey, he has, what? he has, <laughs> what? just like what? me, it yeah, happened no, online. No, you don't just know. like me, it happened online. <laughs> Look, 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 either way, this either one way. time, this one, let me, let me tell this story real quick. This one time, you know how I was, when I used to go back to San Diego, I would stay with him and Jess because they lived in Chula Vista, right? So this one time we were hanging out and it was actually, I think it was like a Saturday or something because we were all there. So it was me, Josh and Jess hanging out and I think he was singing niggas in Paris or something. And then, uh, songs I got was, no comment on. Yeah, yeah. And then like, but he wasn't he wasn't playing the song. He was just singing it. And then he said niggas. And then like as soon as he said niggas, he he did like oh and like covered his mouth with his hands. <laughs> and then like me and just looked at him and then just laughed. And then he just like was like, in oh his my God, defense, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> in his defense, though, when it when it is around you, like this is this is what I, I would recommend to my my black friends. If somebody around you isn't black and you are offended by the N word being said, a lot of times it's not just pure ignorance. A lot of times it's also repetition. You hear it all the time. It's it's live and well in music. It's live and well in everyday conversation with, with your community, depending on who you are. So what my what my recommendation is don't just hop. Don't just hop on somebody, get in their case because all of a sudden they're ignorant, they're racist, they don't know, blah, blah, this and that. Just ask somebody like, hey, like, you know, maybe try to reason with them like, hey, I know you said this. I know it's cool, but like sometimes it does kind of hit me in a different way. I would much rather prefer my 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 folks, my people, my friends approach people like that than to just turn around and call somebody racist because ultimately they're the only reason why they know and use that word is because they have grown accustomed to you as well so let's just kind of you know there's definitely sometimes and I'll, i'll be honest there's sometimes where music is playing and i'm rapping along and a lot of times i skip over the word but if the song is too fast like if i'm spitting twister and i can't i can't finish that bar without the word you gonna hear me say it but it's not it's not to anybody it's in my car it's in you know what i'm saying and that's just real that's just real i hate me if you want to but I don't use it in no term of disrespect, and I never used it outside of music like that. So I ain't trying to hear it. Oh, I, nah, I damn all that! I'm, I'm, pissed, I'm pissed the hell off. Damn all that! Josh kicked out the league now. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> yeah, Josh, hey, I'm, I'm still in the league though, right? I'm still good, right? <laughs> Both y'all out the league. Man. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, we're just gonna have to give people um, one of those punch cards with a pass on it. So every time you use one, you can... <laughs> all right, your passes are out, buddy. Yeah, 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 you're out of here, pal. Your ten times is I'm, over with. It's ten oh, times, man. bro. That can last me a lifetime. <laughs> bro, I've been friends with friends with Brandon for like ten years, and I only said it once. So that shit can last me a la- a lifetime. <laughs> So, yeah, well, I was going to say, you know, Josh had all these black... I'm pretty sure every time Josh has brought home a friend or said, had been like, yo, I'll come meet my homie, it's always another black dude. I'm like, he's never really... I've never really heard him slip up and say it. I, I was going to give him some, some props. We just threw him under the bus real quick. But I, I, I prefer... I the he said it was... Saying, like, let's keep it real. What are, you, what are you supposed to do? One of the, one of the most streamed um, genres of music nowadays is rap. And a lot of those artists come from certain areas and backgrounds that support that kind of language. So it, it, in a, in a logical sense, I totally understand. I'm not going to shy away from it. I don't mean no disrespect, but if that N word slip out when I'm slapping my Dom Kennedy, Hey, we just going to have to fight buddy. And I'm going to shake your hand afterwards and we can go hit the Popeyes. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, you know wow. what I mean? I'm not. I, hey, look. If there's bad words in Spanish that other people can't say, by all means, my brothers and sisters, let me have it. Yeah, I'm a beaner and a wetback. Let's talk about it. Okay, it's okay. It's like, Joey, it's like Joey, the Joey reminds me of. Joey reminds me of that scene. Have you ever seen Barbershop One? And then uh, oh, no, Isaac, no, no, and, and, and Isaac, and Isaac says the N word, and he's like, he's like Jimmy, "I'm blacker than you." That's do Joey this. is blacker than a lot of black friends. I have, don't so. do this. Don't do this. <laughs> Yeah, don't do this. I actually battled. Okay, Not personal. Black history, I, I actually, I actually battled with some emotions pertaining to this in my youth. Um, as you guys know, a lot of my friends are black. 
and I grew up listening to gospel and R&B music and my grandparents are Mexican who were pastors at a black church in Baltimore, Maryland. So other people don't know me being myself. They're coming at me like you're trying to be something you're not like, bro, you never hung out at my house for a weekend. You know what I'm saying? You don't see my two black nieces coming in and out the house. You don't see you didn't know that my mom helped raise three black children, uh, you know, in in my younger days. You don't see these things. You don't know that I play basketball, baseball and football with a bunch of black teammates and I don't care what you look like. But me bumping some rap music, listening to gospel music and stuff makes me trying to be black like, bro, suck my brown dick. (laughs) <laughs> okay, no. yeah, bro. that gets me every time i'm at your house and that black girl come walking out i'm i always forget <laughs> she's there. i'm like yo who the- oh yeah that's right no, you can say it you said who's that in there yeah you can say it <laughs> sis are you okay blink twice if you're in any harm <laughs> it's actually funny because I, you you guys know me. I've I've had a handful of black girlfriends as well. Not to say I don't like other women. Those are just the ones that liked me enough to want to date me. So what am I doing? I'm not I'm not I'm not choosy Susie. I'm just playing the field how it's coming to me. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny because I realized that the the black girls that I've dated specifically, I'm usually the first Mexican guy that they've actually dated. Because when they've tried to date other ones, they haven't been so openly welcomed in their homes. I I realize that a lot of my peers and a lot of my, you know, Mexicans of my age, their families aren't exactly open to these, you know, co-racial experiences, especially with black people. So to me, to me, it's hurtful because it's like I don't see it in my home, but I've seen. I've seen me invite black girls or black friends over to my house and kind of walk in with some hesitation because they don't know, oh, my family going to start speaking Spanish as soon as they walk in. Is there going to be like some kind of looks going on? And I've actually had to have this conversation on more than one occasion with different people, letting them know you're safe here. <laughs> like you're, o- <laughs> you're, okay. you're okay in this house. My mom smothers that chicken and mustard before we fry it too, baby girl. You all right. You is hey, all at, right. At the end of the day, don't hate the player, hate the game. Joy likes to play on the blacktop. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get so many DMs from this shit. <laughs> so the guy. Bring them on. I'm ready. Um, last but not least, real quick. I mean, there's not really anything major on, but um, did you guys do anything for Valentine's Day? The homo? I was with a black girl. <laughs> I really was. Hey, shout out to Diamond. She held it down. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Just stay on top of I, 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 I have. It's, it, it was legit. I was waiting for it. I knew it. <laughs> Stereotypical but, uh, now. Okay. My, plan, my plans got messed up a little bit because I, I started talking to this chick. And she's a single mom and all that. But, mm. yeah, but, but apparently it was. It was a. Uh, her baby daddy's time to see the sun. So she on Valentine's Day. Yeah, that's why I was like, yeah, I'm not lying. Yeah, that sounds like a load of <laughs> crap <laughs> to me. That's why I was like, I was like, when you get back, lose my number. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so. But you know what? Oh, I can't. Well, see, I was gonna say something, but I know that your position in life, you know, wouldn't allow this anyway. But yeah. Oh, well, no, I was gonna say you don't gotta be around like that. You know, <laughs> be around, just be around on Tuesdays or whatever it is, or, or, or whatever it would. Uh, have. For me, uh, I spent my Valentine's Day with my bay on a uh, online. Uh, thankfully, I'm able to play video games with mine, and then I spent the other half with uh, with Ashley, my wife. My bay, obviously, I'm talking about Brandon. <laughs> I spent half my Valentine's Day with Brandon, and the other half with my oh, wife. Oh man. <laughs> He said, hey, shout out to my shawty and my wife. I love you both. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I played, a, I, played, I played some video games with my wife uh, about for about a good like four or five hours before we had the kids open up some stuff over FaceTime. Did, did you guys play strip Call of Duty? <laughs> no. You don't play Call of Duty. You play Fortnite. If I, get, if I get 10 kills, that shirt's coming off, mister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sheesh. Um, well, I guess that's about it. I don't have anything else. Oh, I, I lied. Well, 
So eventually we're going to get to this top albums of 2020 or top projects of 2020. Oh, man. We still have we're two months in the the 21 already. Yeah. I know. It's for real. Oh, we got to get that out there. It's, it's over. Over. <laughs> you, you guys just want to run them off real quick? We can run I mean, them I, I got my list right here. I can give it to you right now. All, All right. How so many are we doing? How many you want? Remember, let me just let me just let me just start with I, I I have a few written down that I know we brought up at halfway through the year where we said these are our top so far, and I think that those aged well. They still remain toward the top of the rest of the year. I feel like the second half of 2020 was kind of a slow year for albums, to be honest. Um, but up until then, we had the uh, music to be murdered by by Eminem. That was early in the year, and that's still for rap. It aged very well still, and the and the wait 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 wait. wait. Did you like side B better or the regular version better? Oh, the deluxe or the, the regular deluxe version? Uh, yeah. I'm going to go deluxe just because a little bit more of Eminem isn't really a bad thing. I can agree with that. Preach. I can see that. Um, the Brent Fayaz had that Fuck the World. I know you guys probably aren't too big on him, but it was actually a very popular so album. Um, I'm still stuck on the Denzel Curry and Kenny Beats collab album, Unlocked. That shit is fire. I listen to it weekly. Um, we did bring up the Don Tolliver Heaven or Hell. It didn't age as well as I thought, except for a few songs, but I still bump it. The J Balvin Colotus album is still fire. Um, the Weekend After Hours album got him a spot in the Super Bowl that he let down a lot of people on. That's great. Childish Gambino's 31520 actually is still a vibe to listen to. Um, we all kind of, well, me and Brandon mostly like the Thundercat It Is What It Is album. Still bump that one. You know, um, the Freddie Gibbs uh, uh, collab album with the Alchemist, Alfredo. I still sure. bump uh, one very under one album that got a lot of shine for a month and then went away was the album by Tiana Taylor. I went back and listened to it a few days ago. It's still a really good album. Um, Ty Dolla Sign featuring Ty Dolla Sign. Not much to explain there. Daniel co-signed that one. Um, the Busta Rhymes Extinction Level Event 2 that came out a few months ago. That shit has some bars in it and some heavy beats. I really enjoyed it. And the only one I'm going to throw in that to me was kind of a personal, it's kind of weird. Um, it's a bluegrass album by Sturgill Simpson, my probably one of my favorite country singers. It's called Cutting Grass Volume 1. If you're feeling kind of weird, check it out. But that's really all I got. I can feel that. Yeah, a lot of our lists are going to be the same because, you know, we talked about that, a lot a lot of music dropped after that second half of the year because of COVID and all that. But um, one that I definitely found personal for me was it's it's by this artist named KB. I mean, it's called His Glory Alone. He's a Christian rapper and all that. Um, if you guys go to if you go to any contemporary church, you'll hear a lot of the samples that he used where he used. He turned worship songs into rap songs and it wasn't corny. Like it was actually wow. like legit. really yeah, it was. It was you know, you know how I feel. We've attended church together a lot, and and there's a difference between gospel and worship music. And I was just so bored with worship music. So if you're telling me it's worth the listen, I got you, fam. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah it's, def- it's okay. definitely on the list. I'll send you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll send. I'll send you the link uh, when we get off of this. Um, that Amin album is still going ham for me. That Amin got a got a. Uh, 2021. Uh, yeah, it's called Limbo. Yeah, he's got a 2021 theme song for me, which is called Woodlawn. That's the theme song for me for 2021, even though it came out in 2020. I'm living by that this year. Um, that Logic No Pressure album, obviously, we talked about. Um, I forgot that one. I forgot that one. And, and then uh, Kid Cuddy's Man on the Moon. I, I really enjoyed. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Those vibes. Um, <laughs> and then that, of course, and then the, the top it off with Eminem side B. I feel like. Side B should have been the album. Like <laughs> you could have took five five of them off five songs off the regular one, just replaced the ones you put on side B, and then it would have been a legit album even more. So I don't know, but I don't know why you did it. I mean, I know why you did it because of money. Like you're gonna get money no matter what because of your stands you got out here. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. But technically, if you have two drops, that's more money. You know what I mean? I get right. I get what you're saying. Yep. I agree with that. I did I think I did like side B better. For sure. Yeah, so, so I got to, I got to hear Eminem on a on a, a club track again. I haven't heard of that in a while, so that got it pretty cool. That album that killer song. But yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for me. I'll send you the links to that KB one right now. I got it. I got it on uh, Apple Music right now. His Glory okay. Alone. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in on this one. Uh, a lot of my a lot of my uh, additions were the same thing that you guys talked about. We already talked about the weekend. We talked about uh, Jay Balvin and Colores, uh, Kid Cudi mm-hmm. again. All these albums, 315 by Childish, were some of the highlights that I had already put out. Uh, some of the ones that I put out that are a little bit more. Uh, I have two rock out al- or rock slash metal albums mm-hmm. that you can throw in there. Uh, obviously, Perdida by uh, Stone Temple Pilots. It means lost. Uh, it's been their first album that came out for like I think it was like ten years, and it's it's still one of those vibe, one of those chill rock albums that you can listen to from some old heads if you want to call Stone Temple Pilots uh, '90s band kind of like old head. Uh, and then Ozzy Osbourne came out with another album. Uh, it's a long time since I've heard an Ozzy Osbourne album itself. Uh, obviously, he was reintroduced to the music community with uh what song was it that he came out with he was featured by post malone he was f- featured in a post malone song and he obviously came back uh as well as uh, cruella dropped a house album their kind of house dubstep zero that's one of the ones and then joiner lucas i was huge on adhd and then he went on and dropped evolution later and later during the year um, another album that I also liked and listened to a good portion. And then one that kind of held strong that I kind of saw a little bit more videos from that I heard midway through the month, uh, through the year that kind of just kept on resonating with me was uh, Juice World's uh, posthumous album, Legends Never Die, which is uh, it has a couple of obviously any sort of Juice World music is going to be sort of that sad boy songs. But uh, it did have a little bit of uh, meaning to it that kind of gripped me a little bit better than a lot of that. That kind of reminds me of how hurt I am that Kendrick still hasn't dropped a new album and all these dead people are still dropping. Like, yeah. It's just like, fuck, I need bro, 2021. It's got to be the year, right? Like this, this got to be, this will be fought. What? That, uh, four, keep that four? for me, Joey. Go ahead. I, I, trust me. It's not going nowhere. Keep that. Keep that. Cause I, I have a quick little story to share about something having to do with that. Um, well, let me hit you guys on my list. You guys said a lot of the stuff that I fucked with as well. Brent Fias, Fuck the World, uh, Sir Michael Rocks, Broken Windows Opportunity, West Side Guns, Pray for Paris, Fly God is an Awesome God too. Uh, Thundercat, It Is What It Is, Marlon Craft, Work From Home. Oh, that album he just dropped too, by the way. I know it's not 2021. This is a 2020 list, but that album he just dropped, yeah, it's got some slaps oh, on yeah. there. His newest out, yeah, that show was super hard. Um, Reason New Beginnings, I really fell in love with that album. Uh, yes, I totally forgot that one. Over and over and over again. Yes, sir. Uh, Kid Cudi, Man on the Moon 3, of course. Uh, Amine Limbo, uh, shout out to uh, Stepa J. Groggs, Rest in Peace. My favorite song on there is called Fetus, uh, featuring Injury Reserve, who Groggs is a part of. Rest in peace to him. Uh, what you said earlier, Joey, Freddie Gibbs, Alfredo with The Alchemist. Uh, Maria Isabel, Stuck in the Sky. Uh, Benny the Butcher, Burden of Proof. You know I fuck with Griselda Heavy. Uh, Katori Walker, Idols. I love his little his little project EP, whatever it is. Don Tolliver's Heaven or Hell and the Chop Not Slop version. Both versions were fire. It's still going on in rotation. Juice World, Legends Never Die. Rest in Peace, Juice World. Uh, Run the Jewels, RTJ4. That album was fire as fuck. Great concepts, great lyrics. Just brilliant, guys. Uh, Kehlani, it was good until it wasn't. Still mm. listening to that. Mm-hmm. Makes me want to mm-hmm. put a big girl. Um, and this was might shock people, but Drake's Dark Lane demo tapes. I no matter what, I don't know what it is. I love Drake. I don't know why. I it's got him. the vibes, bro. It's got the vibes for sure. For sure. Um, That's how you speak on the name. Like I'm more for your head top. <laughs> All right, that's that's wraps up my list though. But 2020, I the music they came out, I enjoyed, and I'm sure I'll be listening to a lot of this, you know, for time to come. And uh, hopefully, 2021, eventually, we kind of get the the ball rolling. But the only albums I really know about so far, are like the Marlon Craft album and the Jasmine Sullivan album, I haven't really heard anything else this year. There's there's been a handful. We just haven't taken the time to acknowledge them like that. Well, I'm sure, sure. we will in the, in the upcoming weeks. But yeah, that that Jasmine Sullivan album coming in very strong. My early favorite for a female R and B album of the year. And honestly, if if this album had came out last year, it would have beat last year's all all of the ones from last year. So I got high expectations. So we'll see. Sure. Um, anybody got any? Well, okay, that Kendrick Lamar story, real quick, right? Oh, so right. a couple weeks ago uh, for David's birthday, we get an Airbnb. He invites our barber, it's kind of our friend, John. Shout out, John. Um, he's he's, he's like, he's like a drink. 
What? Is that the one that's is that the one to be cutting hair in secret during anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so so he gets super drunk and we start talking about music, right? And then he started talking about like, man, rappers these days are trash, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, you're tripping. I was like, if anything, it's just because it's so uh, saturated. So yeah, you, you have to find it. You have to go look through it, bro. You might think that everybody sounds the same or sounds like trash. But then he started doing that. Remember that that when Snoop Dogg before the Migos like, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In reality, Migos are the only people that sound like Migos. I was like, even Young Thug, who people made fun of when he first came out, like, he don't sound like Migos. Uh, Playboy Cardi don't sound like Migos. They all have these different sounds, but like a weird style, if anything. But if anything, the rappers that, who are. Uh huh. I was right? gonna say, if anything, the only thing that's too consistent is the syllable count. That's yeah. what makes everybody sound the same because uh, in the sixteen bars, every two bars, they're hitting the same the same notes and off notes. That's the problem with the baby. People say he has the same flow. Even if he changes the pitch in his voice, the, the, where the words start and stop are the exact place that they start and stop on the last few bars. So that that's where it gets confusing. So when they say everybody sounds like Migos, that's what they're talking about because it's a syllable count. For sure. So, so when I was like, we started naming off like good artists. So it was like me in the car, David, our homegirl, Lexi and John. And right. of course, and we're like, try, I'm like, I'm like, there's plenty of good rappers, Jordan Lucas, J. Cole, you know, Drake, uh, Kendrick, like we're just naming off artists. When I say Kendrick, he laughed. He said, Kendrick Lamar ain't been relevant since 2017 was the last time he dropped something going the fuck off. Right. So people and don't still like, celebrate Tupac. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, and, and he's like, he's like, I was like, name somebody who's like. I was like, name somebody you want to like pair him up against or whatever. And I was like, he said, I think at first he said Tupac or Biggie. And I told him like, I was like, his biggest album, we had this conversation the other day. I was like, it's only sold like five times platinum or whatever, right? And that was in 2014, Mm -hmm. years after he died. And he sold less albums in death than when he was alive or whatever, right? Um, Then he was like, uh, he was kind of like just being around the bush saying like, he's not relevant and not giving me an artist to compare him to. Because I was like, here's what we'll do because we were going to a restaurant. And I was like, you give me an artist and I'll put Kendrick Lamar against him. And we'll ask random people at this restaurant, who do you think is a better artist or who makes better music or whatever, right? And then, you know what he ended up saying? But like the like when we kind of were d- done with it or whatever, he says, Lloyd Banks is more relevant than Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> what was y'all drinking? Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but even even though Kendrick hasn't made uh, or dropped, excuse me, I'm not saying he hasn't made music or even helped produce or write because he's got that cousin, he's got TDE, even though he himself has not dropped a project in the last four some years, how many albums can you name better than his last album, Damn? Like, yeah. really? Like, really? It's preach. It, slim to know, none, sir. Know, slim know, to know none. One. I know one, but it's his album. Hey, thank you. Okay, thank you, Black Panther. Thank you. Okay, so even you talk about relevance, you're talking about even though or here another sports analogy. Timeless. Bro. Another Jesus another sports timeless. another sports analogy. Um, Patrick Mahomes didn't win the Super Bowl this year. Technically, he's not relevant. Is he still probably the best quarterback in the league? Yeah, possibly. So, you can make the argument. If if Patrick Mahomes don't win the next three Super Bowls, but he's still playing at this level, is he still the best quarterback in the league? Hell yeah, bro. That's the same shit. That's the same shit. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, Kendrick. It's not just because he hasn't dropped music. So oh, the fuck shit. what? His songs are I was still. Like he's busy being a fucking the president of TDE. And Stop playing. Put, being a future on all these artists that come out on TDE. Oh, you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me, and, and no offense to anybody personally, but I'm just going to use somebody who I know drops a billion albums a year. Gucci Mane. He drops like 400 songs a year. Just because he's relevant and still drops stuff, you mean to tell me he's a better rapper than Kendrick because Kendrick ain't dropped in four years? Bro, Kendrick can take one album. His Kendrick could probably take his worst album to a lot of these cats' catalogs and still wipe their ass. Yes. <laughs> so I just it makes no just, sense, bro. It was so crazy. The conversation was so crazy. And I just remember when I finally said it, David thought I was kidding because we were actually at, um, we were at Benihana's and they had the outdoor seating at the one we went to. And we sat outside. And then, like, he went to the bathroom real quick and came back. And he was like, 
I was like, guess what? Guess what artist he paired up with? And he's like, who? And he was like, Lloyd Banks. And he was like, shut the fuck up. And I was like, no, he said that Lloyd Banks is more relevant than Kendrick Lamar. It was so fucking crazy. And he would not let it go. He would, nobody agreed with him. But he was talking about, we're so young. He's like 34, 35. He's not that much older than this. But he's like, oh, they ain't been, y'all ain't been through nothing. Y'all ain't heard nothing. And I'm like, bro, I've heard the music you've heard. I was like, you could use Jay-Z maybe. That's a way better example of somebody who's more relevant or who's better, quote unquote, than Kendrick Lamar. But you can't just say some random ass motherfucker like Lloyd Banks. He was good. Bro, I'm sorry. Records. There's, there's, there's female rappers that just started rapping last year that are more relevant than Lloyd Banks. Yes. What are you talking about? <laughs> so Lloyd Banks still raps? I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Takashi 6 9 is more relevant than Lloyd Banks. Oh, my God. I'm, not, I said it. Let's not, not go down this road. I said it. 10 straight, 10 straight billboards. I said it. Path I, cannot follow. I said it. What's Gilbert when you need him? Ten straight, baby. Oh <laughs> Numbers don't lie. That's a fact. Million plays, Jabroni. Jesus Christ. It was just – I just couldn't believe it was happening. I was like, he's got to be super drunk. It was super drunk. The rest of the night was super dramatic, so he was super drunk. But it's whatever, though. I'm a, I'm a I cannot wait to be there for that next musical discussion. <laughs> I'm shitting on everything. <laughs> Oh man, I would that would have been a great discussion overall. I wish other people there that were like more musically inclined, because it would have been a much better discussion. Because there's only so much I can say about myself versus somebody who's drunk clearly, but without like he was like, "What are you looking at, Google?" And I was like, "Yes, nigga, because the numbers are here. Numbers don't lie." <laughs> <laughs> Take Lloyd Banks' best or, or most streamed or most listened to top ten songs, and it still isn't against Kendrick's worst album. Whatever you think his worst album is, pick one. You can't even pick a worst album. <laughs> you really can't. It, it was crazy. He all, the, same, the same guy also said that J. Cole was trash. All right, I'm out of here. Like I said, you guys have a great night. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> listening to the But he, anytime he plays music, he's play, I told him, I was like, this nigga stuck in fucking 2005. Because literally, <laughs> anytime he plays music, it's from the early 2000s. Which is okay. Not, not even from last year. Play, not even play the thing. early 50 go, cent. Go, exactly. Go play that G-Unit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's stuck in the old times because he's got memories tied to those years. You know what I'm saying? That's, oh, that sure, was, that's sure. back when he was really, you know what I'm saying? Really Mac killing Daddy. It. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something was going on. <laughs> it also, it's kind of funny that we talked about, real quick, the Marlon Craft. Because, you know, he's from New York and, you know, he kind of has a voice that catches people by surprise. But when sure. he's when he's rapping through his choruses, don't you hear a little bit of that 50 cent swag from back in the day? It's, I feel like it's a New York swag. Is it just a New York swag? I feel like that's what it is, because I feel like I've heard that, like that similar sound or that style, tone, that tone. Like, right. Yeah. Like it's I've heard it before from multiple people and it's usually from people from the East Coast. They just kind of have like that. It just sounds like he's like a, about his business. You know, he real he's serious. He's not playing no games. So by the way, that album that just came out is called oh, How We cool. Intended. I got a question though. Apart from Eminem, we're gonna exclude him. <laughs> who's who's your favorite white rapper? Or who uh, favorite and who is your best? Let now exclude Eminem. Exclude Eminem. He's not number part of one, the number one off the top, Russ. <coughs> Does that count? Um, he's not white. Oh, he's not. Or are we saying non-black because it's he's rap like music? Italian? No, Isn't dude, he? he's like Middle Eastern or something. Is he? Let, oh God, the Google. Here we go. <laughs> Google. Let me let me go first because I feel like I feel like he doesn't count because I don't feel like he's white necessarily. I don't. I could be wrong. I could be super wrong. I'm, I'm gonna say my favorite is definitely Marlon Craft. Any he has a thousand, something, Sicilian. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to hear it. But I think who the best personally? I think it's NF. I think he's super talented. Mm. And I'm super mm. excited for his next drop. You're right about that. So so we're all just going to dismiss Jack Harlow, right, together? He's good. He's good. Don't get me wrong. But he's like – Dismiss. He sounds like <laughs> – it's, it's not dismiss. It's because – and this is going to sound terrible. Dismiss. It's like you have 10 black rappers that sound sort of similar or kind of like have the similar style, right? Like, for okay, for example, he could have fit in with that 2016 uh, – Freshman Double XL, all those rappers, <laughs> he fits in with that whole crowd. Like instead of having a little dicky, throw in Jack Harlow. Mm. It makes sense. So it's like 
Uh, but I feel like the reason why he gets so much more acclaim is and it happens all the time in hip hop. He's a white guy, not a black guy. So he stands out just a little bit more, which is fine. And he's funny as fuck. I don't he's know if cool. you see no, him don't on get me wrong. IG. I still, he's I still like some of his stuff. Some of his bars are witty, and it's like, oh, that's a nice For analogy. Sure. That's a nice metaphor. But on a consistent level, um, yeah, no, nah, sorry. <laughs> I can't do it, man. <laughs> you know what's crazy is? At the beginning of last year, we had that um, – albums that you kind of like or songs we're adding songs onto the playlist and i don't know if you guys remember but i added that jack harlow song before it got popular before that song before that song i don't know if you guys i'm gonna try to see if i can find receipts but i said how about i want to add jack harlow that song popping and for some reason in the back of my mind i was like i know that this song is gonna be popular and i changed my mind because i didn't I didn't want to sound like I was a wave rider. So again, I, I guessed correctly, but that kind of bothered me in a sense, you know, like it's now, now I know. Yeah, yeah. Now I know I'm like, well, I could be a radio DJ and manipulate people into liking what I know is going to get played. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bounce, man. That bounce, and I changed it. I put, I put, um, I forgot who other songs I put on there, but I took out the Jack Harlow from the playlist and I added somebody else. Did we decide so does Russ count or no? He's American. He's a, he's of Italian descent from Sicily. So he counts? Um, <laughs> sure. I would sure. say so. Okay, because if he doesn't count, I got two more I can throw in there. He's and one, uh, I got he, two more I can throw in there and one maybe. It's Russ. I know Russ does rap because, yeah, I listen to his music. But to me, he's more under the category of melodical, like, Melody genius. He's Just really say he doesn't good. count. Okay, no. he don't count. No, he does because look, one of my favorite rappers, Rex Life Raj. <laughs> One of my favorite rappers, Rex Life Raj, I don't see him as just a rapper either. He's in the Russ category for me. Okay, well, I'll just go. I'll go straight rap category then. Uh, my boy G Easy. I, 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 I mm. stay more with the G Easy. I like that. Your favorite after Eminem? No, 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 no. That's not my favorite, but I, he's on my list. I like that. So, so, I like so the G Bay Easy Area. G Easy and the G Easy and Yellow Wolf are are two uh, some of my favorite white rappers. And then my one maybe is because it depends what day you ask him. Logic. And <laughs> hey, hey, BTW, you know, it is Black History Month, but if you are half and half, today is your last day to celebrate. The rest of the month, <laughs> the rest of the month, you know, again, player. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> actually, it ended yesterday, right? 28 days this month, 14 and 14. Yeah. Actually, you're right. You're white today, everybody. <laughs> oh, shit. But Brandon and Daniel, y'all still down with it. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> yes. What about you, DJ? What? 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 A, fav- oh, wow. a favorite white rapper? He gonna say Iggy Azalea? Watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I kind of, I kind of agree with what you were saying earlier about NF. I've been listening to a, a lot of NF. Obviously, Post Malone is, uh, he's a little bit more poppy, but I mean, I could vibe with what he's with what he's got. So, I mean, for me, unfortunately, it's gonna be like Post Malone, NF, and. I can I can I can mess with some Harlow, but I don't really listen to him on a con- consistent basis. Got you. Damn, nobody paid Lil Dicky. That's crazy. I think he's funny. I, I like his. I like his freestyle. He's smart. He's man. funny. He's smart and smart. witty, but he's not trying to like. He himself isn't trying to impress us musically. He knows he messes around, and he does that. So to me, it's like. Rig- he doesn't even work. if you're trying not to sound like a gimmick your choice of words and your topics make you a gimmick so i i respect you but i don't hold you to the same standard as other people is it little dicky or is it dave bird anyway i'm gonna just go ahead and- <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean i know little dicky was different when he started a show and his his idol or the person he really wanted to work with was Trippy Red. You know what I mean? Like people don't exactly <laughs> people don't exactly come up try to be a rapper and be like, oh my god, it's Trippy Red. You know what I mean? Like I and I like some Trippy, you know. But when I saw his show and I saw him use him, I, I granted you might not just be able to get any rapper to be on your show. So Trippy was the one who who did it. You know, shout out to Trippy Red. But yeah, yeah full YG. No, the first yeah. episode he had YG. The, the yeah. Crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he did have YG. The crazy shows, part about me. The crazy part of this about this conversation, I just Googled it just for the hell of it, you know, to see white rappers, right? The list is so short, Kid Rock is on the list. 
<laughs> well, I mean, let, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Uh, DJ just threw in Post Malone, and he always says he's a rock star. So he don't really yeah. he don't really call oh, himself. A we all forgot about Action Bronson though, too. Mm, <laughs> did big sleep on Action Bronson for sure. Big for sleep sure. on him. The Great White Hope. Shout out to Why Action Bronson by the way on his weight loss journey. Back. Uh, he been going hard the gym. Uh, you gotta do me like that. That song still slow. Uh, I still want to know who that shit's hard. hard. Yeah, I want to know why Chance couldn't give us that shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> now he's like, "Ooh, I love my wife." Have you seen his new ad for his website? No, absolutely not. Oh my god! You as soon as he came, as soon as please go to his IG. As please soon as he IG. came to defense oh with what's her name, oh, when she was trying to get at J Cole, I was like, I knew this motherfucker was soft as wet toilet tissue. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he was like, if you, he's like, if you leave this, the toilet seat down all the time, you're a wife guy. You know what's the problem <laughs> when, you know what's the problem when your gay little brother starting to sound harder on tracks than you are. I'm sorry, oh I couldn't do it. God. No, Joey, why? What? We gonna cut that part out? Oh, stop it! I don't, stop it! I don't mean it like that. You, you know what I mean? Hey, they look. They can counsel me. Ain't nothing to counsel here. Don't nobody care about me. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god I noticed nobody made Machine Gun Kelly made nobody's list uh, He wouldn't make my list I'll tell you that right I now I mean he's dating Megan Fox So he's probably at the top of my list Yeah I know right <laughs> A different, <laughs> a different all, list Give him all the shit in the world But he's dating main, Megan Fox a, di- a different list I mean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah Yes I know Eminem took him out back And handled that business Yeah he, You know Eminem is his daddy <laughs> He, he still rebounded, made, he rebounded he pretty still nicely. Megan Fox, and the only the only bad thing, well, I don't want to say bad. The only weird thing about Megan Fox is she got those fat, round, short thumbs. But apart from that, she's fine, bro. Like he's he won in my book. Jesus, <laughs> talk about transform. She was in. She was the one in Transformers, right? Yeah, the, yeah. the first and the second one, right? She's the first three or first two? Is she a transformer? You know what I'm saying? She's not a transformer, is she? I mean, we talked about that earlier in the show, but whatever. Wow. She might be. She's been looking the same the last 20 years. Wow. Hmm. It's a long time. Hmm. Yes, it's what was, what was the name of what was the name of Megan Fox and Fallon Fox? Oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we really wow. Relax. 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 Oh, we're done here. We're done here. It's all. <laughs> Bro, I we think know. that's time to end it. That's a sign. Let's get out of here. All right, Piglets, this has been another installment of Culture by the Uncultured. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Culture by the Uncultured. Remember, Piglets, Culture by the Uncultured is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. We hope everyone out there is staying safe, and if you can't be safe, be deadly. Catch you guys next time. Later, Piglets. And teleprompter off. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>